Okay, let's start. Uh, so all our first time participants uh, who want to win the race. Good. <laughs> we need this determination. But uh, I'm sorry that I cannot teach you how to win the prize. But I'm just here to let you how to not to lose at the game. Uh, it's the, I want you to have the basic being understood. So uh, um, some of the basic concepts of social entrepreneurship and the way that you are trying to approach it, I'm going to exp explain that a little bit more. Um, to, start, to start with, uh, oh, sorry. Um, I have been doing social enterprise for uh, more than seven years. And this line is the firstly attracted me. Every social need is a business opportunity. If, if we could approach some social problem that um, the government have, uh, has no clue how to solve it, but right now we are using business or investment approach to try to solve it. That's the attraction for, point to me. Uh, I've been working on corporate for many years. So um, the reason why I quit my job now, dedicate myself in social entrepreneurship, is because of that. So uh, let's see whether you will agree with me it is a possible way. Oh, let's see some video clips to start with. Um, afternoon is difficult to, to hang on, right? Oh, sorry. This is a electronic burner. This is a current current. Isn't it cool? Have you seen this one before? No? So uh, let me ask you something. How come a village kid could have this kind of invention? Uh, what is it in his mind? Oh, sorry, I, I would like to draw a question mark here. What is, what is she trying to solve? What is the question mark? Sorry? Sorry? Help her daddy. Help her daddy. Uh, for what? Saving electricity or something? OK. Uh, and then what else? Save the time. Save the time. Go to the river and come back. Um, I would say, yes, actually that kid wants to save some time for some other fun things and things, and don't want to uh, spend so much time doing the trouble. But to her daddy, she needs to say that it's saving electricity. But imagine, uh, at first, actually what she, is, she was always been doing is taking those uh, clothes to the river and came back, no electricity needed. But right now, there's just electricity is something, an excuse for her to get things done. So that's social entrepreneur. So the question is saving time, have some more um, fun time for herself, but, and then also the exclamation mark. What is that? What is the solution for that? A machine? Uh, with no electricity, but are helping to clean the clothes. It's that simple, right? So that's all I want to talk about in the next three years, uh, three hours, <laughs> three years. So it's that simple. So for you, starting with that, try to find out what is the question mark, what is in your mind, what you are trying to solve that is being unsol unsolved in the market, and what you want to try to find out is to the uniqueness 
of your idea. It's that simple. Okay? So another one. Uh, try to find out the question mark and the exclamation mark. Now ka intezar mujhe gawara na tha Mujhe mere pyar se milna hi tha Meri bekarari ne mujhe abhishkari bana di पर प्यार को भी अविष्कार का सहारा लेना ही पड़ता अविष्कार ही मेरी नूर का नूर है नई खोज ही मेरी जिंदगी का जुनून है माई टेक्नोलॉजी सो ग्रेट राइट वाई वॉट इज द क्वेश्चन मार्क Where's the question mark? Actually, do you mind to move here? So that my, I, I don't need to move that <laughs> too wide on my thing. Uh, can, you, can you help me? Um, what's the question mark that is in, in his mind? Cannot find his wife. Oh, it's a, what, what a contrast, right? An old man, you have no expectation on him, right? But he is doing something with love, right? So what I want to see now it's sort of making you aware that all the question mark, a good question mark, a good question being asked is because of the heart. Uh, it is not just a business plan for, the, for this old man. It's not just um, competition that he's entering. It's coming out from his passion. Um, win or not, whether people are aware of that or not, is not in his mind. What is in his mind is something that bothered him. Keep on having a, a questions in his mind. So uh, I'm not expecting every one of you in the SG Challenge, your, your business plan coming out, your idea, will be something like uh, what he did here. But I think take the chance. It is a social enterprise competition. Try to think in a way what is keep on bothering you, around you in your own country or around the city? What is that? So today, actually, apart from um, speaking to you on how to write a business plan, that I'm not going to do that, actually, but I want to you to try to find out a way to better understand the question mark. And at the same time, if you can decode a good method in finding, uh, asking the right, right question, it's a better chance for you to find a good solution. Okay, let's go back here. All right, today, uh, there are three parts that we are, um, basically three parts that I'm going to introduce on my content. First of all, it's uh, a basic understanding of my view in social entrepreneurship. Secondly, uh, Sonova is actually um, a model that we developed on social innovation. Uh, we try to break it into four steps. So uh, it is not a universal model, we just develop by ourselves, but it's a way that for, for me to communicate to you what you need to consider when you are structuring your own uh, plan. So it's a four-step uh, process. And at the end, I want to use uh, poverty, uh, more the local context, uh, for you to, to see it and then try to brainstorm a little bit more on how to um, make it an action here. But before that, um, can I uh, ask Melissa, can you help me to pass around some... Oh, you already got some posit, right? Um, let me know if you don't have that. Try to write down a question mark, a smaller ones, and try to write one line. Uh, it's an individual thing. Forget about the plan that you already have. Forget about um, the things that is in your mind before you came into the room. Just one social issue that is keep on, you think is a big thing, keep on bothering you, that you are um, not satisfied with. Uh, one thing, that you really have that passion. One question mark, anything in your own country or in Hong Kong City, um, anything.
you got 30 seconds for that. <laughs> It's top of your mind. Uh, it could it, not necessary to be anything serious like poverty and things. It could be something around you, in your community, and yeah. Okay, can I um, share some of your question mark? Can I start with you? Yes. Please. Ah, sorry. Uh, can you have to turn it on? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. yeah um, mine was poverty in India. Poverty in India. Mm. In India, yeah. Any specific area? Uh, well, actually, I think all around India, there is like little kids or infants that are, you know, uh, poor to the extent where they can't afford clothes, so they're just running around bare naked, and like they can't really afford any food, obviously, because they all live in like streets and highways. And that would be like perfectly normal in India. Yeah. So, I just kind of thought like, oh, that you know, kind of strikes my heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, do you have any specific experience um, that well, uh, you have visited there and, uh, or? Like every time a car stops from a traffic light, there would be always um, kids around the age of three, maybe that just started learning how to walk and they would come up to all these cars all the time just knocking doors to mm. ask for some money so that they can have something to eat. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I see that, it's like very heartbreaking. Mm. And some of them are, you know, at a very young age, um, like forced to sell things like, to make money for for um, for their family to eat something, and some are like forced to sell like alcohol, and so like some of them have to be in that kind of environment and are like um, abused in many ways as well. And mm, so mm, mm. that's just kind of yeah, one thing I want to solve. Good. Uh, can we give him a big hand here? Thank you. Uh, obviously, it's coming out from the heart. You get that experience. Actually, that, that uh, similar experience has struck a lot of people. Uh, you feel that um, you feel no good. After seeing this, it keep on get, getting back to you, as in your mind. Uh, you want to do something. At least think about it. So that's a good question. So if you talked about poverty, it's the outer layer. So we, when you're going in, it could be poverty on the, um, a, a poor man. It could be the kids. So right now, what he's, he's thinking about is the kids. And what exactly it is, it could be something deeper when you talk about this. If it is coming out from your passion, you will see a clearer picture of that question mark. So any other thing? Anyone want to share? What about you? Well, I'm thinking about the culture that is the, in Hong Kong. That uh, There are many people from different uh, parts of the world, like some people from mainland China and some people from the Southeast Asia, they're coming to Hong Kong. I see the problems of people don't get along with, well with each other. Even in school, like students from all around the world, that I see them, um, there may be some gap between us. And mm -hmm. At least we have English group and Cantonese and group here, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So absolutely. I wish mm -hmm. I could see that people could um, get along with each other well, then yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. Good. Um, I would say, especially the ethnic minority. Right now in Hong Kong, all different places, they just live in um, their own area, in Kun Tong, in Yao, Yao Mate and things. People gather together. From Nepal, they, they might be living together. Um, they, they don't want, they don't, um, actually don't want to have in touch with some other people around the city. Uh, they're isolated. Uh, they don't want any support from the others. They don't want to contribute either. So actually, it's not one Hong Kong now. There's a lot of different clusters, I would say. What about you? Uh, well, I'm from Nepal. Oh, you, you, OK. All right, good, good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hello, I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher, and I'm, a Nepal, I'm from Nepal, but I'm staying in Hong Kong from the last few years now. And one of the questions that I think is very similar to her, I'm sorry, I don't know your name right now. Maybe I'll ask after. So <clears throat> my question is that like, we have a big disparity in education. I mean, as a teacher, I can see we have a school, and in the school we have a banding system. And if anyone knows the band one, band two, band three, and I think why there's this thing in Hong Kong, and it's not only affecting the local kids. I mean, local kids are also facing this problem of banding, 
I mean, even they're like really smart, but their academic results shows that you are getting less than the certain score, so you have to go to band three schools. And as a result of that, even the ethnic minority students, I see that they have very good potential in terms of different uh, subjects and in terms of different areas of uh, smartness, like physical smartness, like different kind of like this thing. But because of the low income, first thing, they're not able to do that. And second thing is that why people are only seeing Chinese language as the barrier for their development in terms of education as well as in terms of their socioeconomic status. So I just want to ask that, the, my question is the why there's this disparity. Mm. And because of this disparity, the problem is going as a big circle now. It's not only with the education, but also with the socioeconomic status. Yeah. And as a teacher, I can see that if we can work out, this will be, this can be done. But then in, for this thing, we need to have equal support from other teachers. I understand ethnic minority because I'm one of them. Mm. But even the local teachers need to understand their culture, right? Mm. And in the same time, I need to understand the local culture as well. So it's not about like we're not trying to change, but it's not, I, I do see that uh, there's no kind of cooperation between the two or the more than two communities. And what, you, what uh, Francis, you have just mentioned that we have these different communities, right? Yes, yeah. we do have this one, but what I've seen is that the Hong Kong government and a lot of NGOs, they're trying to say that, okay, this is the Nepalese food, this is the Indian food, this is the Pakistani yeah. food, but the food is not only the culture. There's so good, many things. Good. Uh, let's start yeah. with that. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Namaste. Uh, that's the question mark. You have to find out not just the outer layer, you have to go deep enough. The problem seems to be quite big and thin, but you have to find the real core part of that question mark. So Ned, um, right now what we want to do, you have the small um, pose it right, you have the question mark. Exchange that to, the na to your neighbor. And then at the back, Try to write down like an exclamation mark and find a solution for that question. Exchange that. You may, you may not be able to read those handwriting, right? Ask that person. <laughs> Exchange it. And then try to find a solution for that question for the other. Try to solve his or her problem. Um, yeah, try to change it. Uh, you, if you want to exchange the telephone number as well, uh, feel free. Huh? <laughs> Quickly, one minute. Just one minute. Write a solution for that social problem. <laughs> Start thinking. Okay. Uh, you finished? Good. Uh, spell out the questions that you've got, and then um, what is your, your solution for that question? Yeah, this is Juno, you know, and I got a question is that. Um, People are in general self-centered and cannot see others' difficulties. Um, and then my solution is that it is because most problem, um, most people need to solve their own problems or difficulties first because everyone is um, facing certain difficulties. So before they can solve their own difficulties, um, not too many are able to reach out to help others. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. my uh, solution. I, I actually didn't, can, couldn't get it very clear. Can you use okay. one line to summarize your solution? Uh, my solution is that um, I think they need to focus on their own and then try to um, manage their life better and solve their own 
problems mm. so that um, they will have room to help our others. Okay, yeah. all right, okay, thank you, thank you. All right, uh, can we get some comment here? What is your question mark that you get, the problem and your solution? Um, the question I got was um, the lack of music slash art education. Mm -hmm. And my solution was incorporation of the arts, I guess, in general, into the main core for education. Mm. Because I feel like, especially in Hong Kong, um, school is a very big part of people's lives, especially for young people where this all starts. So I feel like if this gets heavily incorporated into the education system, I think it'll just grow up from there. Mm. Good, all right, thank you. It's uh, absolutely a big issue in Hong Kong. And then, uh, can we get something here? Okay, um, my question mark was the unemployment of disability for, uh, unemployment for people with disability. Mm. And the solution is just uh, having some social enterprises which offers the job opportunities for those people and also some training programs for them to integrate in the society. Mm. All right. Thank you. So uh, it's not fair to you. Just one minute, right? Uh, but start with that. You have to give out a good solution, not too general. In one minute, you can just think about something very general. But when, after you dig out some of the details, what I said is always the actionable insight in that question mark, you'll get the better idea of how to solve it with a better solutions. And then um, while you're doing that, to how to make sure it is a unique way of doing it. Get your idea, turn it into one minute pitch, talk to 30 friends. If all 30 friends, or, or maybe 20 something of them, are saying some concern, or oh, I heard about uh, something similar, and that's, uh, that's uh, have some barrier, then that means it's not a good idea. Throw it away, do it all over. If you ask around 30 persons, over 15 or 20 of them saying that, oh, it's a good idea then it is a good idea. You don't have to ask your advisor. It's very frank, and very frank to yourself. So that's how you treat whether it is a good exclamation mark or not. Oh. Okay, let's start. Uh, that's the thinking that we need to apply in the next two to something hour, um, solution-based. Many of the people right now seeing the questions more. They are complaining to the government they are waiting for the NGOs to solve their own problem. But right now, in this room at least, we talked about a solution-based thinking. When we see the solution, we don't see just the problem. Okay? Social Ventures Hong Kong. We set up this organization since 2007. So we are running a model like a venture philanthropy. Uh, to better understand it, it's uh, just treated as a private, uh, social private equity. So we invest and incubate social enterprises locally in Hong Kong. Um, Maybe you heard, haven't heard about this. Maybe you heard about all these projects here. Uh, these are all our projects. A diamond cap is the very first branded taxi service to serve the wheelchair users. And uh, we launched it for two years. It's uh, self-sustainable now. We got six caps. Green Monday, we are advocating one day meat free. Because the meat industry contributes a lot to the greenhouse gas effect. So right now, uh, by the way, Hong Kong, meat consumption per capita, we are world number one. So we need to do something. So you're a vegetarian, right? You're a vegetarian? No, <laughs> how could you say <laughs> okay, okay, you have to, we have to do something anyways. But I, I'm going to explain more about the cases later on. So Concert in the Dark is a spin-off of the Dialogue in the Dark, in case you have been there. Um, we invested into Dialogue in the Dark, and we co-produced um, Concert in the Dark together with them. So Light B, I'm going to explain more, is about uh, affordable housing initiative. The very first one in Hong Kong, which just launched in February this year. And then um, uh, it's getting attraction in the local media and so as well. Happy Granny is an elderly sponsorship program. So we have the children's sponsorship program. So it's a award winning idea a couple of years ago. So we turned it into a real project um, after one or two years of incubations. So these are some of the works that we do. We try to apply business and investment skills to solve the social problem. So that's what we do. So uh, this year, I'm not sure you heard about this, uh, some people in Hong Kong went to the North Pole Marathon. Actually, that turned into five episodes of TV program and TVB. Uh, so uh, we have some celebrities went there, uh, actually including some local celebrities here, and also Andy Lau. Uh, do you know Andy Lau been there? No, actually, it's not Andy Lau. It's, my, it's myself. <laughs> sorry, sorry, just kidding. Uh, 
I've been there. <laughs> uh, I'm a marathon runner for 12 years. So this is uh, one of the adventures that, that I did this year. And last year, I was there at the Gopi Desert. It's, a, it's called Gopi March. It's part of the Racing the Planet. So it's a 250 kilometers over seven days game. So uh, you carry everything by yourself. So at the end, I'm carrying uh, 10 to 12 kg. So we have to run every day. Uh, first four days, like uh, 40 kilometers every day. So, uh, fifth and seven is uh, 80 kilometers. So uh, that's me. So uh, a formal introduction of myself. <laughs> so uh, I kept on doing a lot of different games. Uh, just like a couple of weeks ago, I was in Singapore for a 100 kilometer run. Uh, I did it in 13 hours. So uh, normally when I talked about social entrepreneurship, people prefer to hear more about my marathon story. So if you don't mind, I always want to share these pictures. Do you want to share that too? Yeah? Okay, good. Uh, taking part of the time. So I hope that as Chinese university don't mind. Game start. Uh, it's the Gobi Desert Race. So everyone got different purposes, just like you guys sitting here. Some team want to win the prize, but some people just want to participate and gain some experience on that. So that's as well. Some people want to lose weight. Uh, actually, he is actually from uh, one of the princery um, family in the uh, Middle East. So he wanted to prove himself with something, maybe. Um, somewhat quite similar to here. On the Wall Street or Central, after you graduate, um, you want to do something. The reason why I like marathon, I think it's the fairest game. Everybody got the running shoes. They could get on the road to compete. And then at the end point, no matter you're the first or the last came back, you're the winner. So that's why I don't like sprint, the short run. But unfortunately, in Hong Kong, in the big cities, in our world, we talked about all these. So uh, when you came in with a competition mind, you're one of those. Uh, but I would say they don't feel happy. Actually, this guy might got a pool already at his backyard, but he don't feel happy because that guy got a bigger pool. So that's our world. We are in a chaotic world. In Head's house, it's not chaotic, but when the rich men die, when their when their younger generations competing for the wealth, it could be quite chaotic. The slum, I've been there. You absolutely been there. When I go inside, I see a little girl, but she is smiling at, smiling to me. When I think back, why those rich people are not happy sometimes, but this uh, little girl, uh, all his all her life is in the slum. He, he don't know. She don't know what is rich but she can feel happy. That made me think a lot more things about the current world. The richest 2% right now holding over 50% of the global wealth. That created a lot of our problem. All the scenario that you see is because of that. Poverty is man-made, absolutely. So when they are taking the wealth, many people are lagging behind. So we have to face it. Uh, it's not our generation, maybe, a couple of generations before, they started off a, a form of capitalism. They maximized shareholders' value. They, and they justified it to be a norm. So right now, what we are doing here in social entrepreneurship, we try to find a better way to fine tune the system. I would say what we want to do is like this, a new platform. In case you uh, firstly came to Hong Kong for exchange program, uh, let me introduce Hong Kong. We have the best sin, but at, at the corner and somewhere in Calden or in the um, northern part of, um, of Hong Kong, you see these scenarios. Gini coefficients, when we talk about the income gap, rich and poor, we're world number one among the developed economy for many years. Um, this year, last year actually Singapore outpasses, but uh, we don't envy them. <laughs> but uh, that's Hong Kong. We're quite serious. If you don't aware of that, go to somewhere in the middle column um, or somewhere in the, in the uh, new territory as well. We have the best food, you would agree. Similarly, you can uh, have all the best food in every different country, even Nep Nepali food, right? They got some real good restaurants there. But at the same time, we create a lot of food waste. A lot of local Hong Kong people relying on instant noodle every day. We got these families. Many children not having a full meal every day. 
So that's the gap that we have. That's Hong Kong. We have the best service, but only on Canton Road, maybe. So all the LV, and then people queuing up, buying things. We get, give them very good service. But how we treat our underprivileged, uh, like the sub subsidized nursing home, the elderly. Right now, average, they need to wait for three years, maybe four or five, until they could get a place in a subsidized nursing home. But one third of the queue will disappear naturally. That's Hong Kong. Many family living in these situations, cage housing, subdivided cubicles, many families live in less than seven square meters, 10 square meters. And that's not the latest invention. We got, we, apart from the cage house, we got COVID housing. Have you heard about this? Three stories or four stories of bad. Uh, four times five, maybe. And then people could just crawl inside to slip. It's like a capsule. That's Hong Kong. We got high rent. And all the people living in such an environment got emotional problem. The women and the young kids. So that's Hong Kong. Transportation, education. It seems to be having a quite a well-rounded system, but many people lagging behind. The cross-generational problem is a bit here. So they don't, um, like the middle class, um, have a, a better chance to go into the universities. For them, underprivileged group, a very small portion of the percentage could went into the, went into the universities. So that's Hong Kong's problem. Uh, do you feel cold, actually? It's all right, right? Uh, just let us know, because um, uh, we have fewer people here. If you don't if you feel cold, just let us know and let us know. So a lot more things happening. You will see all these old people having some, um, picking some papers on the street. Um, they might be having an access at home, but uh, their kids already left them. Uh, they have an access, so they cannot get the social security. So they do not have enough operating money for food for the basics, so they need to still doing that. So that's Hong Kong. To me, um, the real extreme world is not North Pole and desert. Sometimes it's here in the big city. I would say it's not just Hong Kong. Think about it, in New York, in London, we all have the same problem. Right now, how many people in the world now? How many people? The global population. 7 billion. 50 years ago, how many people in the world? Just 50 years ago. Make a guess. 3, three billion? Mm -hmm. Any more? Any more? Sorry? Two something. Within 50 years, our global populations grow three times more. So that created a lot more problems. At the same time, we said about um, uh, is the, is the uh, maximizing. But uh, in terms of the global resources, and at this point of time, we're consuming a lot, a lot of resources, right? So countries competing for resources. And the city, we are talking about urbanizations. But we are not growing our welfare fast enough to cope with the need in the big cities. So our problem is growing in the complexity and in the quantity. So that created a lot more discontent in the city. So you will see many more Occupy Wall Street, Occupy whatever, because people feel discontent, right? So that's happening. It's not just Hong Kong. Minus 30 degrees Celsius, running in somewhere and with nothing there. No animals. We don't see the polar bear. Otherwise, I won't be able to make it back. But, uh, um, you see nothing. It's a nine laps race because you have to go back to a camp to get some water. All the water that you carry out, five minutes, it turns into ice. So you can sweat, but you cannot sweat too much. Uh, that will turn into ice and making you have some um, low temperature disease and things. So uh, you have to keep on doing, keep on running, uh, keep the temperature. The dessert, uh, desert, not dessert. <laughs> uh, daytime, 40 degrees Celsius. Nighttime, it will turn into three degrees Celsius. Within 30 minutes, the temperature will drop. So you have to get the clothes ready when you, when you do the long day. Um, uh, unlike the Sahara, Gobi March still um, uh, have a, a lot of mountains. So you go ups and downs a lot. Actually, many of the time, actually, there's no path. You have to, when you go down, it's really steep. You have to go like rock skating, so going down. But every time you fell, uh, the cadence is around. 
I don't know why the, the, the plant with a lot of um, uh, thorns were going into your palm. So <laughs> that's what we did here. Uh, go across the rivers. You cannot get your feet wet because after that, the blisters will come all over on your feet. So the, the record is one, one feet, 16 blisters for one, for one player. So every night, actually, um, there is some mandatory uh, equipment. Blister kit is one of those because everyone you got uh, blisters. So every night when you run back, the first thing you do is to, to pin out the blister, putting some second skin on that and, and all these things. So uh, it's quite scary though. So it's quite high. Uh, a, a man from Scotland actually fell literally from that mountain and broke in his head. Uh, that's him. He was quite fast at first, but uh, after that, he just, uh, uh, just goes slowly and goes slowly. And then um, yeah, taking, taking the thorns out of the palm. So that's what we did, the blisters, and this is some, something like this. So what kind of people would do these <laughs> silly things? Um, I would say maybe social entrepreneur. <laughs> In the race, people came with different purposes. Brad from Australia. Actually, he, he divorced with uh, his, his wife, and, but he, uh, they got a kid, a young guy now, uh, and He's actually a fireman. The only thing he could talk to his kid right now is about sports. They run together. So I think this game uh, meant a lot to him and also his kid. Robert, Hong Kong resident from UK. Uh, he is 70 years old. He inspired a lot of people in that race, including myself. I'm saying that maybe if I, by the time I'm 80, I want to do that game again, if I could. <laughs> But he wanted to do something to prove himself, maybe. Pamela from the United States, uh, he is running, uh, he has been actually, uh, uh, she has been um, uh, alcoholic for most of her life. Um, but um, uh, an organization in the United States called Run Well helped her to get rid of the addiction. So right now, she's dedicated herself to run a lot of these ultra games to raise funds for that organization. And at the same time, inspire many more young people. Do we have a choice? We see a lot of problems in our desert here. We can break it or we can build it. Chinese people talked about balance. If we got someone occupying now, actually these people love the place, but they just feel powerless. They think that they could do nothing but just shouting at the government. But I would say if we, we tell them, you can think about the question mark and exclamation mark at the same time, you find a solution, you can help the society too. So that's why a lot more students graduates, even from Stanford, Harvard, all the top league, they want to do social enterprise now. Uh, of course, iBank is not stop employing at the same time, but, uh, but people looking for values at your generations, you cannot just mobilize by career and money. That's your values. But uh, it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. I would say it's not about the problem of generation Y. Because for me, you are from the generation V. You talked about vision. Anything that could mobilize you is vision. If you get something that you buy in, you could, do, you could work days and nights. But I would say maybe not the big four audit firm. <laughs> Mohammed Yunus. Um, Microfinance is the concept that uh, he invented and been promoting, advocating for 30 years. He was just um, a professor in economics. He grew up in the United States, but 30 something years ago, 1970 something, he went back to Bangladesh to start um, uh, being a university professor. Uh, unfortunately, in 1974, around that time, there was a big famine in Bangladesh. So he is walking on the street seeing a lot of dead bodies, a lot of young children begging for money. And he said, oh, I want to give some money to them, but uh, how many I can help? That's the question mark. Um, he's saying that um, he's a professor in economics, very prestigious, like myself, talking here in a beautiful lecture home. But what I can help to these people, that's the question mark. So there is a chance that he talked to some village people and then uh, asked them, what actually I can help you? And these village people say, saying to them, uh, saying to the professors that, oh, actually we don't want to just rely on a donation. 
uh, we want to work on some small business. We want to um, um, buy some food ingredients, making some small snacks and sell it out to earn our living. But uh, they don't have that capital. The solution for them is getting some loan shark, some uh, people charging high interest rate. And then, <clears throat> but at the end, of course, you can imagine, every single product that they produce, they will get a bigger debt. And then they become the slave of those loan sharks. So this professor say, oh, how many people in your village have the same problem? And how much money you need? It's around 18 families. Uh, in total, we might need 27 US dollars. So this professor gave up. Oh, here's 27 US dollars. Um, pay it back to your loan shark and then uh, start your own living. So that's, that's the story start. After a couple of months, um, these people came back to the professor. Professor, here's your money. And the professor said, why? Why, you don't, you don't like my money? Uh, it's clean money, don't worry. <laughs> but he said, they, they, the people said, no. Uh, right now, with that capital, we buy some ingredients, making some goods, and we sell it. Furnitures or food. And then we have um, some profit earned. And then that aggregate to be another capital. And then we could pay you back those original capital now. And then we could make our own living without touching on the loan sharks. So that's the microfinance concept. And this professor said, hey, this is what it is. What is the banking system now, uh, even now in, in the big city? Who can borrow money from the bank? Who can borrow money from the bank? Can you tell me? Huh? You can, uh, yes, of course, with your credit card maybe. But, uh, um, but what, what they see is that um, you need to prove something, right, before they uh, give you money. What, what is that? Capital or you got bricks, yeah? So actually, right now, I would say a lot of um, well-off or rich people can get money. So um, this professor say, well, um, we should, well, we actually should put, um, lend money to those people who need, uh, need money, right? So he said that the system is wrong. So fast forward, in these 30 years, he built Grameen Bank. It's the social enterprise that they built up into a big conglomerate now. More than one, um, uh, um, uh, I think 100 million of US dollars revenue and growing to a village bank. They are dedicated to um, lend money to those with no collaterals. Uh, um, collaterals. So uh, with no um, bricks or, or capital, they still lend money to them. And then surprisingly, the return rate is more than 97%. So people will query uh, the bank saying that we don't lend money to those poor people because, because they will not return it back to me, right? So that's the preception. But he broke this preception and turned it into a successful case. Of course, it's not that simple. The exclamation mark, what he drilled, is really different. Uh, they said that uh, group lending is a key. So the village, five persons in a group. And then if I lend you uh, $20,000 today and hope, to, hope that you can return it back to me two years later on the same day, uh, very possibly I cannot do it. But if you break it into collecting every week, 20, 20 bucks, it is possible. So there's some, some rules like this. He invented the microfinance um, um, system. And then that turned into a very successful case. It's in Chinese, but what he always uh, um, um, quoted is, we cannot see the things just from a bird view. Unfortunately, it's our government. Oh, poverty is um, how many people here? This segment we need for $6,000. That segment needs food and things. But we need a worm view. You need to go into the problem. So while you are thinking about your social issues, your question mark, try to go into the field. If you don't go into the field, you have no, you have no way to understand it really clearly. And you cannot find out the passions that you have. So you really have to, at least you find some YouTube clips to see, to feel it. Without feeling it, just seeing some report, economics report and things, no way that you can find a real, a real question mark there. Mohammed Yunus said, my greatest challenge has been to change the mindset of people. Mindsets play strange tricks on us. We see things the way our minds have instructed our eyes to see. So that's the preception that I talked about. Poor people cannot pay back the money. Poor people can never help themselves. Poor people 
would do bad things to us. Poor people would go into the jail. No, we have a lot of preceptions because we don't understand. So first of all, start with the understanding. So that's uh, what we are stressing on every day. Nicholas, MIT professor in multimedia. So he started a social enterprise called OLPC, one laptop per child. Um, who can lend me a computer? Can I have your computer? No, you don't want to lend it to me. Uh, I see the demonstrations. He wanted to drop the floor. He would drop it on the floor. It won't break. It is waterproof. Uh, so glad that you didn't borrow it to me. <laughs> but uh, it is uh, good for the village use. No training needed. Three months, a kid with no, uh, will have not touched a computer before. He know how to use it, very user friendly. And then uh, all around the world, if you wanted to be a volunteer, you could sign up to be a volunteer and upload some education package for the children to use all around the world. So uh, what he wants, what he see, the question mark is the digital divide. In our future world, our world will be divided into two groups. One group with computer, like you guys, with the knowledge, you know how to use the web. But one group have never touched a computer all in his life. So we are, but we are talking about urbanizations. So uh, right now, many more people will be lagging behind because of that. So what he see is that they want this machine to go around the world. By the way, it's around 100 US dollars per computer. And that's how he's advocating um, almost 10 years ago. So he's now spreading with that. Jamie Oliver, 15, is to social enterprise restaurants. Have you been there? No, yeah, but I'm really Yeah, my idol as well. So uh, he, got, he has been very famous um, with his booking, but by the time that he got famous, he'd never forget about underprivileged. He started this restaurant called 15. So uh, 15, the meaning is uh, in this restaurant that he started, um, he could house 15 training slots, or a training uh, a youth to be, to be in the training, to be trained as a chef. So those, those youth are deviant youth, coming out from jail or committed crime before. Um, around more than 50 or 60% of these youngsters coming out from jail would go back to the jail again. That's, um, and globally, it's uh, almost the same. Because sometimes, they, it's quite impossible for them to find a good job. Because they got some red cured, bad red cured. And at the same time, their family is saying that, oh, please don't come back home. We don't want trouble back. So they have no way to choose but finding the old friends. So that's um, their, their problem. So right now, Jamie Oliver retrained them. I've been to this restaurant. And in the middle of the dinner, uh, there will be a chef coming out. Uh, and that time, it's a big guy, a uh, very strong guy. And then a uh, um, black guy, and then uh, uh, it, it's good that he's not holding a knife. I, otherwise, I, I would run <laughs> immediately. But uh, at, at, the, at the sharing in the middle, he started to um, smile and, and then talk to us. Uh, oh, I just got a newborn now. My life turned into a normal life because of that restaurant. You might query that, oh, one restaurant could not just help 15 guys. Um, although they are everywhere in the world, in Australia and some other places as well in London and many other places. But um, it's not just about one restaurant, 15 training slot. It's about the atmosphere, the climate that he shaped up. Right now, a lot of people, the business people, are seeing this example and think that, oh, if we could give an opportunity to the youngsters, they could turn into a better life. And many youngsters, when they are coming out from the prison, they will see, oh, even some people like Jamie Oliver, have not forget about that. So we have a hope that we could turn that into uh, a successful way for myself as well. So that's uh, the culture that he is inspiring a lot, of, a lot more people. Marine Stewardship Council. Uh, of course, you understand that overfishing is a big problem. Our ocean is in, at risk. Uh, people said to me that uh, the big fish is already almost not there. We just got the middle fish or small fish now. But overfishing, uh, even catching the small fishes, um, making our food chain non sustainable. By the way, uh, fish, fish product is one of our most reliable uh, food chain, uh, recyclable uh, food chain before. So, right now, uh, if we, if we tell the fishery people not to fish, it's in, quite impossible, right? They're earning money. But right now, what they do is they launch an eco label. It's called Embassy Label, Marine Stewards Council Label. So, it's an eco label that you can see at uh, maybe Sweetest Super, Walmart, and place. 
So if you see some fishery product on this, with this label, you can buy it at these. So they're using the consumer force to push it back to the industry. So by just selling one or two products with this label, no use. But right now, more than 2.5 billion of US dollars of fishery product sell through this label. So what they created is a big bargaining power. So they're now going back to the value chain, to all those uh, process, fish processor, um, uh, fishery, fishery people, and say that if you apply a more sustainable way of fishing using that kind of source, then we could grant you with this label. And I can guarantee you with some good chain. By the way, Walmart has committed themselves in this couple of years, they will migrate it to use all fishery product only with eco labels. So that's how we are changing the phases. We do good things, of course, with a question mark, with our passions, but we need to work it smartly. And that's why you need to enter into the competitions and think about a clever way in finding the sustainability, but at the same time, solving the solutions, uh, solving the problem with the good solutions. Ventures in Development, they have a brand called Showcase. Um, a graduate from Harvard Kennedy School, a girl, uh, uh, two girls, actually one from Hong Kong, one from Taiwan, started off this idea. So um, they went to the uh, western part of China, Yunnan and Sichuan, and then um, they want to try to improve the living, livelihoods of those um, uh, people from Sichuan. So um, what they see is that they do a lot of research in every village, and at the end they find out that they are really poor with nothing. But every this family got a yuck. It's a big cow here. And um, they discovered two things. First of all, is their milk. The uh, quality of the milk is quite good. So they, they employed a very famous French um, a cook going there to start off with a um, um, cheese factory. So they used the milk to make some good cheese and then sell it to Shangri-La Hotel, some five-star hotel and created the, the, um, um, the value chain, and they could have many more people grow the cow, the meal industry and things. So that's the first thing. Uh, second thing is more stunning. Uh, they discovered the um, yak down to be of very high quality, actually. Uh, that could be compared to some cashmere. So, oh, wow, that's a big thing. So at the end, Apart from just collecting those yak down and making it into some material, selling to some factories, they started off with the whole value chain. They launched a brand, it's called Shouke. Uh, it's called about, uh, it's the uh, Sichuan, uh, the Sichuan uh, language of yak. So uh, that, they find some famous French designer uh, to start off with the chain. They are selling in Lang uh, Crawford and then, uh, some prestige brands and then sell it in a high price. And they created the value chain to help the livelihood of the um, people over there. So that's one of the famous showcases here. Kiver. Uh, anyone familiar with that? Yeah, you, you play that, right? No, I don't. <laughs> so um, microfinance. They are also working on microfinance. Um, that's why I always talk to people who want to participate in the SC Challenge. Think about the business model innovation. Don't just stop with one idea. Microfinance is one thing. But in the past, many people working on microfinance is the big funding. Oh, uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm a Rockefeller Foundation. Right now, I want to work on microfinance. I collaborate with a lot of microfinance institutes in India, in Bangladesh. So big money putting in. Does the organization local will be uh, lending out the money and collecting back. So no participants like us could participate. But right now, that kind of thing is called crowdfunding. So on that website, lock on that, kiva.org, K-I-V-A.org. And then when you go there, you will see a lot of boxes. And when you click inside one of the boxes like this, so one box would be an African would like to buy a ship. Another uh, um, um, person from Brazil would like to buy a taxi. So they got some micro venture idea there. So when you go there, you'll see that here. Uh, you can lend out 25 bucks or 30 bucks. And then when they keep on collecting, when you reach out to $392 here, that fund will go outside, lending to that person. And then, but you can follow it through. So you can ask, oh, whether your ship has already died or <laughs> whether the taxi is in, in good condition, and they will reply you back. So it's a connection. So you and me can participate in microfinance now. So by technology and internet, 
So it's a um, second development, uh, riding on the microfinance concept, a business model inventions over here. So it's another clever way to work on that. So don't stop with a good idea. Think about how to develop it further uh, on your future plan or even wrap around, making it in a more sexy way to talk to the judge. So, um, and right now, after all, it's a, it's a landing. So after a couple of months, when the, when the um, landing due, they will come back to your account. So you can choose to take it back or you can lend it to some other person. So it's a game for you. You get connected with these poor people all over the, all over the world. Isn't it cool, right? <clears throat> Big issue for UK. Um, the founder actually is um, um, street slippers for many years, homeless person. Um, you will see a lot of different additions now in Taiwan and all over the world, many big issues now. It's a magazine with more social issues um, being covered, but at the same time, you will see some people selling it in some tourist spots. In London, you will see them. And then um, they are streetless, uh, street uh, people sleeping in the street, so street slippers. So um, they are selling these magazine at a low cost to these people, and they will earn their own living with respect by selling magazines. So that's how they do the value chain now. So that helped them to, to try to taste the, um, how to get rid of the poverty cycle with some of their own business. So you will see many more cases on the web in the past 10 or 20 years. Many more people, no matter if they are professor or business people or NGO people, it doesn't really matter. They will start off with some idea, some civic force, with, um, from bottom up, um, that also created a lot more different trends. Now philanthropists are seeing all these things and say, hey, compared to charity, that's a more sustainable way. So what they do is that they are now using part of the money, shifting from the traditional philanthropy to some kind of social investing or venture philanthropy or impact investing, whatever name you call them, but it doesn't matter. Right now, new capital looking for new opportunity is the opportunity that you have and we have. A lot of global fund, um, uh, foundation, family foundations, uh, even the big banks, JP Morgan, they are talking about all these trends. Uh, because of the social entrepreneurship trend, um, social investing become possible. So they don't mind the yield. They could sacrifice part of the yield, but they want to find some good opportunity. They could create social impact, social return on investments. So that's what they see. In case you are interested in that, I'm not going to into detail, but uh, a lot of people using a lot of sexy jargons, financial jargons, putting into philanthropy world now. But uh, after all, coming back is not the real things. The real things here is the passion. We can never forget about all these. It's not the capital world. What we see is a passion embracing process. We see the passions turning into reality and it happened in society. That's the only thing that we have to remember. Um, so overall, we just remember it, apart from charity, pure charity, but just utilizing way of using funding to pure business, only maximizing. There are a whole new space here. It's called social enterprise or social driven business. You will see a lot more names, but don't get lost in this jungle. Just keep in mind, doing good in a sustainable way. Is that simple, okay? So, but with that, right now, the traditional philanthropy, supporting charity, traditional capital market, providing capital for pure business, right now, there exists a lot of funders want to do some engaged giving or social investing. So that's the exit for these social enterprises. So if you can work out your plan well, win the prize, there is a lot of opportunity for you to take it forward, really to get it done. Right now, a lot of these funds, we get to know the global fund, uh, they're running out of ideas. A lot of people just at the upstream, looking at the capital things, very sexy, oh, we are big fund going into things, but they have no innovations because they don't realize it's all about passions. You have to work closely, get your hands dirty with the social entrepreneur. Um, we have some um, report, uh, in case you want to find it, just type social investing, a lot of things coming out, um, log on our website and find some resolutions. So between the charity, they do the shelter workshop before. So right now they keep on inventing the uh, revenue generating activities. On this end, 
some business saying that, oh, they, they, they deny to say that I am a social enterprise, but they are doing something good to society. We treat them as socially driven business or social business. But there exists a lot of, a whole big spectrum in the middle. Um, it doesn't matter whether they are non-profit or for-profit. Well, how they distribute the profit is another, the second tier of things that we need to take care of. First of all, it's about the change. Whether your idea or whether the, all the ideas that I talked about is good social enterprise or not, think in that way. After a couple of years they launched, looking back, what impact, what social change they made. It's that simple, okay? So it's not about their legal entity. It's not about where the profit is going. It's about the change, the marginal benefits for the society that they created. That's the only matrix that we have to take care of, uh, take, take into account, okay? So that's the questions that I'm always asking. Muhammad Yunus, uh, right now we are trying hard to get him uh, get his hair, come back, and then we investigate it into the DNA, try to clone him in Hong Kong. That's what, we, what is in our mind. So devil, right? Um, is the social innovator clonable? I'm going to introduce, introduce you a four-step process. Uh, but frankly, do you need a break now? Or you want to go on? Want a break? Raise your hand. Want to go on? OK, I'm sorry. Uh, the break will come very soon. OK. <laughs> All right. Uh, why is it difficult? Because we need Gandhi heart, Gandhi's heart putting in Bill Gates' mind. How difficult, right? Well, we are working on the social. We find our passions with our hearts, like Gandhi. But we demand you with a good brain, like Bill Gates. It's so difficult, right? Um, people will uh, stop themselves by saying, oh, I, can, I can't even work on business. I'm not coming out from global business. How can I work on business? So even though I got good heart, I cannot do that. Um, business is difficult. The failure rate, you can you start up, you already get to know. But social business is even harder. That's a very easy excuse. It's an excuse, I can tell you. If you think in that way, you're not confident enough. Just quit the race. Just quit the competition. What I see when you work on social innovation, social enterprise, you have a lot more social accept. You can mobilize a lot of volunteers. They will come to help you. They will not go to help the business. You have a lot more media friends who come to cover your stories. We have that experience, I will, I will tell you later on. They will not cover the normal business. They will, they will help you to promote you. You will get the um, patience from the consumers. They will buy your products, keep on to be a loyal customers, because you are working on the social gears. Right now, the, the, um, the whole society, the world is shifting. People's mind, even Philip Kotler, the marketing guru, is talking about marketing 3.0. So from four P's, product oriented, to four C's, customer oriented, or customer oriented, to right now what they call is a value-based marketing. People looking for goods. Uh, have you heard about Tom Shoes? Tom Shoes, uh, among the, huh, sorry? You're wearing one? Can you show us? Really? Yeah. Wow, <laughs> I haven't seen it. Okay, I take, why do you take it off? So that you don't want to get yourself upside down? Oh, wow. Oh, big hand. Can you share us with the story? Briefly, but. Well, I mean, like, this guy, he was traveling to Argentina, and then he saw that kids were walking without, like, any shoes or slippers. But they did have their own kind of traditional shoes, a la or something like that. So he started thinking, like, why can't we? I mean, he did see there was kind of donation of shoes coming around. But the problem with this donated shoes was that some of the sizes were too big and some of them were too small. Right? So he started like talking to his friend, like also his coach who was teaching him polo in Argentina. So then he started designing a shoes, and yeah, basically that's the story. And then so right now, how do you do the marketing? So John. I bought this shoes because like I found that if I'm buying a pair of shoes, I'll be. I mean, the company, the Tom's will be giving one pair of shoes to the 
Indonesia, right? In Africa or in some other third world. Yeah. And yeah. The funny thing is that I'm kind of like a bit of a Tom kind of talk. So I'm carrying my water bottle with Tom. <laughs> so my, excuse me, my kids ask me what is this, right? So I've been telling them the story. All right. I'm promoting Tom even though I'm not paid for that. But yeah. <laughs> so that's value based for me and I like this story. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. And then uh, let's cheer for him. Uh, a person who walked the talk, right? Not just talking. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're so poor. Yeah, I want to do something. By being a consumer, you can support the third world. Isn't it that simple, right? Isn't it simple? So I would say right now, why Tom Shoes got a big market share is because of the consumer is shifting mind. So don't tell me social business is difficult to do. If you are not confident enough, we don't need you in the camp. We need someone to see the opportunity. That's a big opportunity, I can tell you. So you will see a lot more people working on social business with Mohammed Yunus. Then on, they start a yogurt factory in Bangladesh. So they're um, um, going into the market with a smart way, doing a factory, employing more people, launching a small, um, um, lower price yogurt to help the malnutrition problem in Bangladesh. So doing good, we can make money, for sure. But how can we do that? There's a four sim uh, step simple process. But before that, you have to realize what is innovation. Innovation minus invention equals to acceptance in society, profitability and market performance expectation. So that's um, if Tom Shoes is inventing the biggest shoes uh, in the world uh, for giant, it's a very unique thing, very creative idea, right? But no one would buy it. Only the giant would not buy it. So they, there does not exist a market. So what we see is an innovation, is a cre not just a creative idea, but with the acceptance of a, a bigger population. So you could have the market to launch it. And it's workable, marketable. So that's a real invention. And it's not just in your mind. It's not just a brilliant idea coming out from the toilet. It's something put into real action and marketable and grown. It's the innovation. Four steps. <clears throat> Actually, I talked about most of them already. First of all, you have to find the root cause of that problem or an actionable place. Just like, like rock climbing, you have to find a way to leverage, right? So even the, how, no matter how small it is, you have to be specific to find that point and then leverage your whole body on it and then going up. So inspire is the first word that you have to realize. It should be coming out from your heart because you have to keep your passions. If you keep on doing one thing for 10 years or 20 years, if it is not coming out from your heart, it's impossible, no matter how sexy it is. Second thing, uh, it's about disruptive innovation. The market should not be having that before. You're working on something unique. It's cool. When you talk to 20, 20, 30, 30 people, 29 of them will say it's a brilliant idea. Then you have the momentum to keep it, keep it going. If um, all 20-something persons say, oh, somebody already did that, you keep on doing that, you do not have the momentum. You lose your own momentum. Understand what I mean? So idea. But that's um, trainable. I'm going to share you, with you some more things later on. It's about a way how we could um, train up your creativity. So it's a Harvard model later on. Uh, it's all about association. Um, third thing, incubate. Up, up till now, Inspire Invent is still in your mind. It's, in, it's still an idea, a concept. But you have to structure the business plan and get it done. Most of the time, prototype or pilot you have to get some pilot done. Even you, if you're entering the SE challenge. Because many of your comp competitors, competitors, um, they are working on something real, for real. So uh, when you talk to the judge, when you're presenting, if you, you say to them that, oh, bless you, we have already, bless you, bless you, and then we have already working on something, pilot in some districts, that will make so much difference. You understand what I mean? Some realistic prototype or piloting is important. But at the end, even in SHK, we work on pilots. 
we don't launch a project right from the start, pulling in the millions of dollars as the capital. We run small pilots with low cost or no cost. And after that, we show, going back to the investors and show them, we have the small pilot done in Guntong. Right now, we want to replicate that in all 19 districts. Can we have the capital for three years? And after three years, we're going to show you that oh, we will be getting ourselves sustainable. Most of the time, we get the budget. You understand what I mean? So investments not coming right from the start. Even you want to be an entrepreneur in the future, not just a social entrepreneur, you have to work in that way. Don't just go to the funder and say, oh, give me three million, I'll show you. No. Um, if you go back one year later, they won't show up. Because the first contact that you open, you only have one chance to talk to one funder. So get yourself prepared. During this stage, understand the problem, find your passion. Second stage, that could be 100 ideas, but you shortlist into five, run pilot on two, and you come out with a concrete development plan or business plan, then you get it done with the investments to replicate it, to scale it, okay? So that's a simple process of the four steps. I'm gonna explain uh, in details in every single step, okay? First step, inspire. No one could be an all-rounder. So you might want to find some explorer in your team. You'll get to know whether you are one of those or not. Uh, probably these guys, after graduate, they might be working in the research firm. Um, they seldom to, uh, talk. They prefer not to talk, but observe. They are good at looking into insight. Uh, looking at the same problem, they see very different angles. They could think about 10 different ways. Uh, I always talked about this. Is, um, have you ever cut a watermelon? Normally, we think um, cutting a watermelon is like, oh, cut it one, two, three, four, like, right? That's the normal eyes. But explorer could see, oh, if it is not a watermelon like this, oh, we cut in that way. We could get the sleezes of that. Oh, can we use a knife like a, a clone? We could cut that into a tube and making a tube of watermelon. So for the same watermelon, we approach it with the different ways. That's different insight. So you will come out with different angles of solving one problem, okay? So same for Tom's shoes. When we see poor people with no shoes, or we find some charity to find, get the budget and buy them shoes, right? That's the normal eyes. But Tom's shoes, Tom's saying that, oh, we need a more sustainable way. Can we see in that way? Can that turn into a market? So what they see is going beyond the normal way of doing cutting a watermelon. Understand what I mean? There is see, there exists some people uh, who is always uh, skipping class because uh, he needs to daydream. He will be hanging somewhere there. When he's in the lecture theater, he's actually not listening, but he is thinking. I, I'm one of those persons. <laughs> so uh, these people might not be good at academic, but they are good at creating. They know how to associate. So right now, um, when you go back to the Indian poverty issue, um, can you name me one thing, anything, or any person, or any place? Just arbitrary, anything. Anything. Chair. chair. OK, chair. Now we associate chair with poverty issue. Give me some idea. Raise your hand. Chair and poverty in India. Chair. Yeah, chair, chair, chair. Somewhere you can sit. Idea. Please. For example, for me, like in Hong Kong, I see like many public places we don't have chairs, and that's a sad thing. I think someone can do it, <laughs> but I think like poor people who are like really poor, they can go and like rent the chairs in the public places, and they can make money out of that. Like 
there's some kind of organization who has, who has lots of chairs. So maybe they teach them how to make a chair, and they go and put it in the public places. And then maybe they can sit down there. And, and, they, they, and those persons who are getting, uh, renting a chair has to pay the money for that. And that's how they make money. Mm. And kind of like, that's, that might be one of the solutions to alleviate poverty in that way. OK, OK, that's one way. Any other crazy ideas? I know I want crazy idea. Give me one. Please. Anyone from the front? We need to find inventor. Can you yourself do it? Try it out. It's quite challenging. A strike? Sorry? Putting strike to the government? Strike to the government. Throwing chairs? Ah. With, with chairs, throw it yeah, to the windows. Yeah, yeah. And Use it as a weapon or something. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm sorry. OK. <laughs> That's you. Uh, you. You want to say something, right? <laughs> I'm sure you want to. She wants. Yeah, give me an idea. Thanks. Um. Suddenly you got inspired, so you just need. OK. Chairs in poverty, right? That's the, mm. that's the way the connection is. Chairs in poverty. Um, maybe finding, gosh, that's really hard. <coughs> Chairs can be that hard to make. Maybe, maybe they could make chairs. They could make chairs. Yeah, they could uh, make get chairs. the people to try to make the chair. Yeah, like yeah. Using maybe out of like recycled goods too, because maybe okay, maybe like a poor family can't afford to make chairs, but if yeah. there's an innovative way of making chairs out of recycled goods, yeah. and upcycling them in their community. Yeah, good yeah, upcycling workshop for for the poor. Good idea. Yeah, okay. Thank you. That's it. Um, maybe it's. Not that they can't afford a chair, so maybe they don't have space for chairs and stuff. So maybe if we made them like very foldable, like out of recyclable material, like the design of a chair could be different. So like a cheap design may be able to fold into a, to, like and be used as something else too, or something like mm. maybe the chair is a table, but then like you can fold it and like do mm. whatever you need it for. So like versatile chairs and I don't know. So it's more than just one thing. All right, good, good. Thank you. So um, anyone else? Okay, good. I'm just thinking about like a social enterprise restaurant and then like usually the people who go there already are like social aware and then for each chair that they sit on it's like for example like an identity for each chair and then like this chair maybe if you sit on this chair you have to double the price of your food and then like that money can be sent to for that chair you you will be double um so you have to play a music chair, like uh, you can go around. It. <laughs> okay, uh, a chair that um, in the restaurant they could uh, use to raise money for for them, right? Um, can I try one? Okay, um, just a wild thought for you to to take reference to. Um, I put a chair um, at the slum area. So a chair, a beautiful chair. It's called the chair of the mayor. So when people, some foundations people, they could raise funds. So every month, the top guy raising the money could be sitting there at the slum and then talk to these people in the slum. So showing their care to the slum people, and then they would hear all of them. And after that, these people would, would go to meet the mayor. So they could talk to them, and then um, uh, getting his friends as well with a small table to share what they think about the poor. At the same time, uh, by seeing that chair, the people in the slum will feel that, oh, still someone is caring about us. The chair of mayor is here. How is that? It's just a wild thought. just came to my mind. So um, start with that. Association is about that. Whatever you see, you see a pen. Think about how is a pen with your prof. So that's association. I'm sorry it's not a very complete idea, but it's just a way of showing you how to think about it. It could be a marketing campaign. It could be an advertising. It could be somewhere, um, somewhat like a business model for you. So the more you train yourself, the better idea you will get. So try not to stop at one good idea, although you think already good. Don't stop at that. Try to keep on inventing with some new ideas. So builder. It's the third person that you need in your team. 
or some some people can have a multi tarsus but uh, builder is somewhat that um, could get the homework done overnight. You know what I mean? I don't know why they can do it, but uh, with a couple of uh, examples, they could get made one good one. So uh, you need these people to help you structure the plan. Uh, they might not be good at creating, but they are good at getting things done. Oh, they see an idea, they heard from you, they'll get to know, oh, uh, in that case, we might have some concern like blah, 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 10 concerns, but we could um, fix that with another 10 solutions for that. Or the chair, what should that be? Oh, I know a sourcing place like this. They will get the things done, okay? At the end, the resourcer play a value there. Resourcer might be a rich guy, but might not be. They are good at um, finding people, connecting people, convincing people. Uh, it's not just about money. Sometimes it's about the partner. Sometimes it's about the network. If you've got one connections, maybe it is better than, than you get one million dollars. You know what I mean. So um, resources are good at locating the right resources to scale your thing. Okay? So you might probably need these four people in your team, or you have to develop yourself with these skills. Uh, it's just a simple um, a process that we have, that we think about. It might not be your process, but think in that way. Idea generating, but at the end get it done, and then scaled it with some way, okay? One after a child, the question mark, he got inspired with the digital divine. He is a professor in MIT. He met with the top league students all the time. Maybe I'm just in, uh, inventing a story for him. He has been to India. He sees some kids. He sees the big contrast. Why the MIT students from the well-off family could have that kind of exposure, but for this village kid, cannot. He's 50-something. He might think that he's just got 20 more years or 30 more years to go. He just kept on doing that, helping the well-off kid to build more wealth, having more wealth, or he want to do something to the poor. Maybe just 100 or 1,000 kids that he could help, he might want to commit on that. He can't wait until he got retired, so he quit his job at 50-something. Oh, that's a sound effect for me. <laughs> so you got inspired with that. And then invention. He is good at that. He could mobilize some resources in the MIT. So the invention part is what he's good at. He, he knew it. And he feel that I got the obligation. I got the burden. I got gifted, but I need to do something. So that's what he do. At the end, after he got the um, prototype done, actually a lot of people providing help. Um, it seems to be IBM, eBay, Google, a lot of freeware and things could be done. If you are working on a business, I'm sure these people will, gonna, will not come in. So don't tell me social enterprise is at the weak side. We are at the strong side. We could mobilize a lot of people helping us on the incubation. Collaborations, very possible. At the end, investments, these people put in money as well. They help to scale it. And a lot of government is buying a whole lot of these machines, helping their country, the village kids, to do that. So, answering the impact question, with this wealth, with OLPC or without OLPC, isn't it obvious, right? So that's how you see your social enterprise idea. Think along of you. After a couple of years, looking back, what it impacted to the society. I'm sorry I said very fast, sorry. Uh. <laughs> so, uh, Grameen Bank. Um, problem, question mark. People, poor people. But poor people, what he sees is not poor people need help, need money. Poor people need credit to get their own living and respect. That's how Muhammad Yunus see this problem. The question mark, landing to people without collaterals. 
It's very clear. It's not in the system now. They are turning the, the system upside down. It's the end of the way. So that's why he's so successful. And at the end, right now, actually, um, they, they incubate a lot of rules, 16 rules for those families to return them. And then a lot of things, you can imagine how difficult it is, especially in, in, the, in, the, in the world like um, uh, Bangladesh. But he made it. Actually, they, he developed a lot of things, like uh, Grameen Firm is one of those. Um, he created some venture opportunity for the poor people. Um, uh, even in the, in the village, the poor people need communications, right? So uh, instead of every single one of them get a phone, he, um, you use microfinance to lend some money for some uh, small uh, shop people or shop, uh, small venturer, and then buying a phone. And then they um, uh, lend it to people to dial uh, for several ten cents of money collecting. And then gradually, they could pay back the, 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 uh, the loan. So that's a Grameen phone, so award-winning idea. So these kind of things, right now, Grameen developed into a group of at least um, 10 different things, a big conglomerate on different things, uh, Grameen energy and things. So that's how he created the kingdom. But at the end, right now, even United Nations is helping him to promote it. So apart from Bangladesh alone, uh, he helped um, more than 8 million of people getting out of the poverty cycle. Right now, United Nations helped to promote and replicate this concept. More than 100 million of people being helped all over the world in the last 30 years. So it is a big, big thing happening. To inspire, uh, I'll show you one video. It's about the, oh, sorry, some more things first. So you have to find the problem. In Hong Kong, there are a lot of more problems going on, like uh, income inequality, um, the uh, ethnic minority maybe, disabled people, environment, youth, uh, city stress, and many more things that you can think about. You can choose whatever you want. Uh, not, not just always poverty or environment. You could think about um, traffic could be one issue that many cities are facing. So try to think more innovatively, but find something, as I said, your heart really attached. Okay? That is very important. So uh, if you choose poverty, look in a way, uh, I try to complex the things here, but there will be a lot of things um, cutting into watermelon. But find your own way. Don't get confused with the jungle. Uh, don't look into it. I, I don't even look into it. I just <laughs> but let's uh, aggregate some, from some news on poverty. So you put these thoughts together, try to map out your angle of seeing the problem is uh, what I want to illustrate. For example, poverty alone could be break into education, working poor, housing, food, and many more different directions. So how you cut the watermelon will let you see different things. All right? Diamond cap. Uh, let me sh share with you a video here. Choi 等一些才能的朋友很方便可以找到的這個business 
，但係直。正正係因為咁，輪椅使用者亦都好希望有點到點嘅服務。我哋有車之後，有個的士牌可以營運啦。但係最終啲客係咪願意俾一個比較誒、呃、的士一般更貴嘅價錢去接受我哋嘅服務咧？咁啲客路喺邊度嚟咧？點可以養得好呢架車咧？咁我哋咧亦都花咗啲時間咧，要揾我哋一啲穩定啲客路啦。咁而家我哋都相對非常之誒幸運咧，有一啲安老院嘅業界嘅朋友咧，同你一齊合作做呢盤生意。而家我哋院舍係有部分嘅長者，因為佢嗰個復診嘅安排咧，佢係迫於無奈要安排一啲即係改裝嘅車輛咧，俾佢哋去使用去醫院復診啊，或者外出咁樣。咁一方面其實機構嚟講咧，作為一個轉介者嚟講咧，明知道佢嘅車輛嚟講咧，其實安全方面。對老人家保障係有問題嘅，但係冇選擇，所以換言之，機構其實一路以嚟嚟講咧，亦都好多心理入面嘅包袱喺度，就話假設有意外發生嘅話咧，其實我哋都要承擔相關嘅責任咯。咁跟住咧落嚟就係我哋商界嘅夥伴啦，因為淨係靠安老院嘅客户咧，都係唔夠養到一架廿四小時運作嘅的,的士嘅，我一定要揾好多資源咧。喺商界嗰邊可以放到落呢間公司嗰度，令到佢咧可以長遠咁樣咧養到呢幾架車，咁先可以繼續咧完成我哋嘅使命，就係、是、接到啲財運嘅朋友出街。香港社會創造基金運用係慈善創投嘅方法，我哋希望利用我哋嘅資金、商業知識同埋網絡，為社會創新帶嚟新嘅嘢。咁而轉的，今次我哋希望就係緊密咁同主流嘅商業社會界別去協作。香港誒社會啊創投基金咧，即係佢個出發點咧。就係、是、咧，就希望賺到錢翻嚟，就可以投資落去第二個誒社會企業個計劃。咁喺商界個角度咧，佢哋如果支持啊社會呢個企業嗰個做法嘅話咧，即係唔係話淨係啊喺一個投資嘅角度睇，但係喺一個所謂社會嘅責任啊個負責任嘅角度咧，亦都係一個啊應該係啊可考慮啊嘅模式同埋發展。I'm very impressed that how the people at SVHK are looking at the missing piece of the social need and to fill that needs with the entrepreneurship. Okay, let's go back. Doris, the CEO, um, she was a journalist uh, for most of her career life, more than 16 years. Um, 2008 or 9, um, she quitted his, her job and came back to SVHK and said, hey, I want to take Diamond Cat forward and make it uh, myself to be the CEO of that company. The reason why her passion is coming from her own experience. Her mother was struck by 2006 on wheelchair. So every day, she uh, well understood what is the, how difficult it is to took her mother out to see the doctor and came back. All the caps that you see outside is not wheelchair accessible. So um, she understand the problem. So I don't need to taught her how is the disabled people's feeling, um, what is the market like. She understand all of these. She dig out in the problem. So that's the inspiring that she got. And at the end, actually, the incubation process is not that uh, simple. It took around three years for us to incubate it, to find the right taxi license uh, owner partner, to find the right vehicle. So, but at the end, it was launched. And then uh, two years of operations it has been very successful, I would say. Um, although we are still um, are growing it a bit more, but it is, at least it is self-sustainable now. Uh, five caps at first, and then this year we got the sixth cap, uh, because the cap license is quite a huge amount, seven million of Hong Kong for one license. So we don't buy a license, so we uh, rent the license from some owners, and then we rent that to some um, drivers. Uh, <clears throat> but with that, um, her, home, her whole family treating her mother's uh, problem or, or, or seeing that uh, very differently. One year something ago, uh, her mother passed away. By the day that um, she went to the um, a funeral, she saw a diamond cap. And she said, oh, it's her mom reminding her to keep that going. So he, she cannot let the business go, because that's her mother. So all the customers that she sees, she meets, 
is her mother to keep that going. So right now, I would say diamond cap is carrying her blood, and that's her mother. So if you work on something with your passion like this, I can guarantee you with a success. We do good thing, but as I said, we need to work in a smart way. The reason why we get that um, self uh, broken even so quickly at two years is that uh, with the advertising on the side, so uh, we run event like Diamond Sedan. I don't know whether we have that. Yeah, Diamond Sedan Chair Competition. So it's, um, uh, we got some corporate team to support that event as well. So uh, at the same time, right now, we are launching a Diamond Lasher line. Is that, uh, we launched some disabled, uh, barrier-free um, tour package for, for people on wheelchair to take on the tour. So that's uh, what, uh, what Doris has been doing with her mom before. So right now, she turned that into some business to sustain it. So that's social entrepreneurship. Second step, inspire, invent, incubate, invest, invent, excuse me, invent. We need new ideas, not in the market before. Dialogue and dot, have you, how many of you have been hearding, heard, heard, heard about that idea? Raise your hand, please. So this is a, a basically a dark museum. When you go inside, 70, 75 minutes of uh, dark tour, guided by visually impaired. So, but after that, just treat it as a cool experience. By the way, uh, if you haven't been there, an extra reason for you, on TripAdvisor, Hong Kong page, it ranks number two. Uh, Disneyland is somewhat like 10 something, so forget about it this, week, this weekend. Go for a dialogue in the dark. So right now, uh, the inventions have been kept on doing that. So as I said, you, in, at your idea as well, don't stop at one point. Right now, they're spinning off with um, dinner in the dark, wine tasting in the dark, birthday party in the dark, uh, no candles to blow, but no one who throws a cake. And then um, they have now dialogue in silence. So they are uh, employing a lot of deaf people to work on, on some workshop type to engage you to, um, uh, without listening. So these kind of inventions they kept on doing. And every year, SHK, uh, together with dialogue that we invented, concert in the dark. So imagine it's uh, 500 people in complete darkness to run a concert. So it sounds very ridiculous. So ridiculous that it's a global the very first. Although Dal and Dal is from the German franchise, but they have done, done a, haven't done a concert before. So uh, 500 people, but people when, when people go inside, it's not just like this and dimming down the light. When you sit uh, already, it's dimming down the light. No. Uh, when you go inside, 10 persons at a time with a rope to lead by one um, visually impaired. So I've been running four years already. So uh, the tier one singers, will, um, celebrities will work with us, um, like Joey Young, and then um, Lei Ha Kan, Gu Gei Gei, and some, some of the top tier singers, Seor Star Rubber Band, somewhat like these. So that created a lot of media coverages. At the same time, help us to promote the, uh, our social missions to a bigger extent. So invention, innovation is important at this point of time for social entrepreneurship. If you want to attract the eyeballs of the mainstream, you have to get innovative ideas. It's all about association. iPod's concept is from a lock. Uh, you can think about just a button. But the way if you associate more, like the chair and poverty, then you think beyond the current thinking. It is trainable. It's a Harvard research. They find a lot of innovator uh, or entrepreneur to, find, to, to tell them there are these four skills is what they always train themselves or, or getting them, themselves to be more innovative. <clears throat> Questioning. For one question, just like what I demonstrated, you keep on asking, oh, what is the poverty issue that you think about? It's the kids. Why? Why do you think it's important? Oh, what is, what is the experience that you have? You keep on asking the questions. That could help you to get a deeper thinking about things. So, your, your innovative mind could be trained in that way. Secondly, observing. Um, just like drawing. You look into one person, then you can tell a lot from that. So, um, yeah, so <laughs> I tried to demonstrate, but I think I, we, we, don't, we don't have enough time. But uh, when you look at some issues, uh, tell me what is your impression about me, Francis? 
with just the past two hours. What kind of person I am? Just shout out. No, no need to have a microphone. Very quickly, yes. Uh, what do you think? No. It's not a person that I want to mention. <laughs> what about you? Very social. Very sociable. Very sociable. Mm. Actually, I'm an introvert. <laughs> what else? Uh, what do you think? Talkative. Talkative. Talk too much, probably. And what else? Sporty. Sporty. I do marathon, right? What else? Dedicated. Dedicated. And what I would do during weekend? What do you think? Sorry? Running. Running. <laughs> no, I, can't. I don't have enough time to practice. Observe me. What I would do, actually. Can you tell something from, from me? I, I don't know. It's observing. You, you go silently, sitting on a, at a corner, but you look at the persons, then you can tell, can tell a lot. So sometimes when we are seeing that, when you see one sort of problem, go into the field. Just sit there at that chair, maybe, and then observe. Look into the persons. What is wearing? When I can aware of that, Gentlemen, oh, he's wearing Tom's shoes. Then without saying a word, you want to go to make friend with him. You understand what I mean? So that's observing. That's very important. Experimenting. Try to build prototype, make it a habit. Whatever you think about, try to build that up with a pilot and then get it done. The more prototype that you do, just like modeling, the more you do, the more skillful you are. The way that you think will be very different. Last but not least, I, or I would say it's a more important thing, even after you graduate, try to network more. Even I'm an introvert. I want to talk to more people. Don't just get into the crowd of your career, around your, 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 your people in your career. Uh, you are working in an audit firm, don't just hang out with the auditor. You'll get bored and things. Try to have some drink with an engineer. Try to talk to the accountant in that company. Uh, seriously, you, get, you build the links in your brain by talking to some other people. And so, on. so when you have that idea in mind so, so, uh, for SE Challenge, talk to somewhere, somewhat, someone that's out of the loop. Talk to your auntie. Talk to someone who's not working on that. Talk to a construction worker. See how they feel. So you get some new links for that, OK? So these things, uh, sometimes they suggest you to, to do more, and then you can uh, build up your creative mind. New ventures. I'm not suggesting you to copy all these, because you type business plan on Google or Wikipedia, you get plenty template. Template itself will kill your idea. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure whether SC Challenge has got a template. No, oh, it's... <laughs> Oh, it's, it's not a good thing. Because you hear that, you, don't, you won't follow template. People follow template, we'll, we'll, we'll lose it. You, you won it. Uh, try to tell a story, just like what I did. The first paragraph, don't put, just copy and paste a report, analyst report on poverty, the Gini coefficients putting on the front page, you're dead. First paragraph, first line, starting like a one minute pitch to talk about your idea in one minute. Uh, people talk about elevated tests. Because when you're together with, um, sitting next to you is Mr. Lee, Lee Kashing, or Bill Gates. You got just one minute together with him in the elevator, and you start pitching. Don't push it. Uh, oh, uh, Bill, Mr. Gates, uh, uh, I'm one of your admirer, and then um, you lose your chance. First 10 seconds to the judge is important. That's what you do here. Uh, judges are lazy, uh, including myself, sorry. They don't see your whole plan. They're capturing. So more graphics, your business model, putting into a chart, some photos that could catch the eyes. They just glance through it. So first paragraph, you lost them, you lost the race. First and last, important, uh, that's your reading, your reading habit. Think about it in that way. So, First paragraph, the whole idea in one line. Okay, can someone repeat my idea in one minute or 30 seconds? 
Can someone try? Um, can you help me? Yes, you. Can you help? Just try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, just. How do you start with that? You are meeting with uh, Mr. Gates and selling this idea from, on behalf of me. Yeah. Okay, I give you some more time. I'll come back to you. Uh, who can help? Can you help? Yes. Please. Uh, so we are building a chair of mayor in an Indian slum. So uh, we'll use the chair to make people feel that uh, even though they live in the slum, they will feel that they're locked. And they are helping people care with them. And also the chair will make the mayor or foundation to go to Oh, thank you. Give me a big hand. Uh, I'll get back to you on some of the things, all right? Uh, but I think, uh, thank you so much for remembering a very brief idea. Even I forget part of that. So, so but uh, um, make it clear. Right from the start, you have to catch the eyeball. So the uniqueness of your plan have to be there, appear there. And then try not to spend too much time or, or effort in teaching the judge. Um, your issues, your slum, how worse is this? It could come later. But at first, you have to strike them with the, um, the sexy parts. Okay? So, and, and the name of that uh, plan is important. Yeah? Um, so, do you think chair or mayor would be good? Yeah? That could catch you. That could be catchy, right? So, think in that way. But uh, don't stop at one name. Try to develop. Um, while you're doing the brainstorming, one little advice. Try to make the idea brainstorming into two parts um, of the discussion. First part, just brainstorming. Throw out all the ideas. Find some one note ticking. Whatever, how crazy it is, how, how dumb you think that the idea is, write it down. Don't comment. Don't criticize. Make it the first part. And after that, on another day or at the second part of that, okay, now let's categorize them and try to discuss on that with some more objective criteria and discuss, okay? So that would help you to build up a longer list. The longer idea list you have, the better chance to find a better idea. Understand what I mean? So you just keep on debating on one or two, you, you get the momentum down, and you cannot um, get some good things to think about. So um, in that way, you will think, you, you, when you're using a storytelling way of um, writing a plan, you'll get it automatically done. For example, oh, our visions you try, is trying to narrow the in, um, exclusiveness in the society, the rich and poor. So right now, the rich people is sitting in a slum. First line, maybe I will throw out like, um, imagine a rich man is now sitting at the chair in a slum. How is it like? So make it the first line maybe, to attract the eyeball. And then you talk about your visions. Way forward, we, we try to bridge the rich and poor with, fun, uh, with funding, with some careness, and with the participations of the mayor. And then you talked about the, um, the trend. Right now, actually, a lot of rich people want to do something. Uh, billionaires' numbers is raising, but um, about 60% of the corporate would like to do some social good, according to blah, blah, blah research. And then the... Um, the slum is getting worse. Many more people do not have food, but they are longing for support. Right now, we're um, analyzing the competitions. Now, no one is putting a chair in the slum before. 
It's the market cap. So uh, a lot of relief help. It's just uh, remain to be the food uh, relief. Very uh, low profile, not, nothing really serious, getting into top line news and things. But if we could get something done like this, we could raise the public awareness. Our objective is to get 80% of the newspaper cover this news. Can it be done? I would say it can be done. So that's our missions, to raise the public awareness about all these things. And then we'll have a crowdfunding website being done. It's called Chair of the Mayor. Support the billionaire or the millionaire billionaire that you want him to sit at the uh, chair of the mayor. So you get a few icons. That, um, you ask them before, and then they agreed that I can sit on that. If I got nominated, I would donate that sum of money at the same time. Every vote equal to one dollar US. How is it like? And then you structure that. Oh, after one year, I will do four campaign every quarter, so as to, so that I don't be overstressed. That four quarter, <clears throat> I would um, um, find four billion there, and then they would be donating each of them $1 million. So at the end, $4 million would go into the slum, improving them in blah, 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 five different ways. And the mayor will be meeting these four billionaires for a press conference, and they will have a small, um, they will get a royal logo on their company things, and then uh, they are the chair, uh, alumni of the chair of the mayor. And then that will be turning, the sitting in the chair and things will be turning into five episodes of TV program, being aired in the nationally, and then uh, also on CNN being covered, <laughs> and things. So that's our visions. At the end, so that uh, we are leveraging all different persons. So what we need, the cost, number one item, a chair, 10 bucks. And then a TV program, zero dollar, because we are leveraging them. Uh, they are the, our media sponsor. Uh, we need donations. Oh, by the bin in there. Uh, we need the way, uh, mayor's consent uh, and an agreement on that is free. But we are charging the government with some money because we are helping them to solve their problem. So we get some funding for that. So uh, right now we have three staffs under that amount of money. So they will be helping on that. One is engaging the NGOs, making sure the money is will, will be running the right, right course. And then second one will be on the managing the campaign, the marketing and advertising campaign, making sure that we pitch for every single possible um, media coverage that we can have. And the third one will be organizing the whole things, arranging the billionaire to help on that. But just one person will be enough because we are partnering with a well-renowned 4A PR firm. They will be providing all-round support because they want to get in close to the billionaire. And at the end, our visions. This we run at one city in India first, Mumbai. But that could be replicable in Hyderabad and some other places. So second years of operations, we will be doing in 10 cities. And then we'll be doing that in Bangladesh. In Asia, we picked Thailand and Myanmar because it is growing now. At the end, the success matrix is obvious. Whether the billionaire will agree on that. Oh, by the way, we have already asked Mr. Lika Shing. He has already agreed uh, we'll be doing that. And the chair, by the way, we find it is over here. Is that chair. Um, I'm sorry, taking some time from you, because I, I want to illustrate how I would write a business plan. That's how I would write that plan. Okay? Green Monday, I'll show you a video. Green Monday, Wow, 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 wow. Oh, it's Cantonese, sorry. It's about Green Monday. Oh, the airport is now going Green Monday. Oh, there are a lot of menus, new launched in the restaurants. More than 60% of the restaurant joined Green Monday. So even the uh, cabinet crew saying that it's delicious. Oh, she liked meat before, but not anymore. It's now, she's now vegetarian. It's difficult to find uh, vegetarian food before, but now it's different. Many customers need that now. And they ask me, uh, what is the uh, vegetarian food today? So Hong Kong Airport Go Green Monday. It could uh, 
lower the carbon emissions. Growing one cow is like driving for 70,000 kilometers of carbon emissions. So global warming, 18% of the greenhouse gas is, is contributed by meat industry. So it is a big thing. So the airport wants to go Green Monday because of the carbon emissions. So they gave us big money for that, uh, doing that marketing campaign. But at the same time, we are helping them to promote Hong Kong airport to be the number one airport in going green globally. So I like that too. And then uh, we promote. And then blah, 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 airport authority want to go green. Anyways. Yeah. Anyways. Okay, you understand that, right? Yeah, right? I don't need to translate that, eh? Okay, yeah. So Green Monday, uh, we start with zero dollar budget. So last week, actually, we got a mainstream marketing award, the Marketing Oscar Bronze Award. We won McDonald's, we won um, Fairwood, we won Disneyland. So we got a big prize. But at the same time, we got a citation on small budget campaign. What we do is one thing that I want to consider what I want you to consider in your plan as well is collaborative marketing. Collaborations is the business talked about nowadays. We don't have enough resources and plan to grow everything by ourselves. Right now, we are leveraging more than 1,000 restaurant outlets. They joined Green Monday by launching some options on Monday, some of them the rest of the week as well. But what they get is the brand awareness, getting close to green, and then um, one of the shops is um, uh, famous in selling beef. But right now, the, even they are launching some vegetarian dishes. And there exists 60 monks eating there. So there exists one location. So they got more business by launching vegetarian options. So many vegetarians will choose the mainstream restaurants right now. So we are shifting the culture um, day by day. Or airport go green. And many brands, Demont and the airport, and then uh, some other corporate came to us for green solutions. To, so that made our sustainability. So within 18 months, we shifted the culture almost. So it's a green trend now going on. So collaborations, think more in that way. Last but not least is about um, new capital. Um, we talked about uh, not just money. And one case that I want to showcase to you is about um, Light B. It's the very first affordable housing initiative in Hong Kong. So right now, uh, I talk to you. The housing issue is one of the pain in Hong Kong. Many people living in really, really bad hygiene situations and small area. So right now, some property owner renting their apartment to us. We are re-renting re them to some single parent families. For example, one apartment, there exists two to three sleeping rooms. We move in two to three families, single mom with young kids. So they are sharing the living rooms, sharing the kitchen. So we rebuild the neighborhood. Before, in the subdivided cubicles or cage housing, they're being isolated. More than 80% of them got some emotional problem. So right now, they're moving in. It's somewhat like an ecosystem shifting. So we give them light. Literally, it's lighter, brighter. So it's like a Light meaning photosynthesis. We put them into a different ecosystem. They start releasing oxygen. They smile. They're getting fatter. They want to find a job. They want to uh, go outside. Just a couple of months, they changed a lot. The kids start to play together, uh, less emotional problem. They are improving and then learning how to live with the other people to, to, um, on that. And at the same time, uh, it's a transition housing. After a couple of years, we hope that they will be setting alone, um, giving them just a chance to, to uh, do that. So that's before, and that's after. Um, they're sharing the room, so they're, they're just fighting for toy, but this learning process. So right now, a lot of media cover that, and then a lot of property owners get to know it. The latest, the eighth one, just within half a year, we grow from one to eight apartments now. So we are scaling. And then the latest one is actually coming from um, Hong Kong 
guy from Vancouver. He saw a newspaper, the Chinese editions of Ming Pao uh, in Vancouver. And then actually he said that, oh, I got a, an apartment in Hong Kong being locked up. It's just an exact gain for them. But right now, if you got this plan, um, since we have already taken care of everything for him, uh, he don't need to sign the contracts with the um, underprivileged family. We will collect him rent. If they don't uh, give us rent, we will commit it. We will be giving you the same amount of low price rent already. Um, um, so that's the, uh, we will handle all the hand, uh, maintenance and things as well. So he is now committing, oh, okay, I can let, it, let you to use it. So compared to nothing, although they are sacrificing part of the yield, we are at least giving them some rent now. So that's how we work. So we're bridging too well together with that. So it's the uh, very first affordable housing initiative here. But sometimes it's not just about money. It's not just about investments. It's about um, the expertise, the network. And right now, these um, social investors also will be visiting at the families. And then one of the investors came to us and said, uh, look, actually, to me, it is a humbling process. After they see how the poor people is struggling, trying their very hard to grow, to make um, uh, her kids to went into the university, he feel that, oh, it is a big thing. I could contribute, and this is my luck. So I think the more we do this, the more links we have, the more we change the culture. I'm going to cover it later on. So um, we will be starting off the, um, uh, something later on, but uh, there's one line here. Incubation is a process of embracing the small sparkles of passion until the fire can sustain itself. So at the end, come from that. But with the exclamation mark, what we try to build is to sustain the things that we have. David Bonstein is uh, um, a famous writer on uh, social entrepreneurship. He said, poverty is not only a lack of money, it's a lack of sense of meaning. OK. Coming back, we'll have a small discussions on a game. So uh, here's a break. Sorry. So it's about Lipe, the affordable housing. Um, so a lot of the single mom not right now in Hong Kong. She's describing the um, poverty issue in Hong Kong now. These are some of the families in the Light B affordable housing. Um, her husband uh, passed away, so she came from the mainland to take care of the kids in Hong Kong. She's a social worker helping on these families. She said solving the housing issue is a big thing to uh, solve the poverty issue. So this uh, new home. They can play now, the kids, and not before, when they are living in less than 10 square meters. So they have to park around. It's in Guantong, somewhere in the East Kowloon. So three rooms for three families. So he's Ricky, the CEO of that social enterprise. Average rent. Right now, Light B is charging just maybe half of that. This lady is now being nominated as one of the committee members in one NGO. Very active now. She's the one saying that she wants to go back to study and doing social work here before, uh, later on. Um, they cry less now. Uh, 
So yeah, I don't need to translate that again, right? Well, how come every every thing is start with uh, end with yeah? It's the uh, Apple Daily. It's always like that. I don't know why. Okay, poverty. Um, I have a Cantonese clip here. I I'm thinking that maybe I don't play it now. Just think in that way. Uh, I want you to go into poverty issues. Uh, whatever context you think about in your country or, or in Hong Kong that you can observe or in mainland, it doesn't really matter. Um, try to talk to t uh, one person or two to three persons in the group and discuss an idea. Try to find a way to cut the watermelon. And try to find one ex exclamation mark. It's that simple. Uh, don't expect too much things. Five minutes. Just get it the feel. I have some other contents on poverty I want to share with you. So just um, think about that in a way um, uh, to try to firstly um, think in, 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 in the solutions first. OK, maybe you can group together, come here, or, or you can go back to, to, to go to um, whatever. Yeah, two to three persons. You, can, you three can come together, maybe, yeah? OK. All right, OK, start from now. OK. It's a good time for you to practice one minute pitch. Okay, listen up. Okay, so my group is focusing on poverty. Uh, uh, closer to the mic, please. Okay. okay, closer, like this? Yes. Okay, good. our group concentrated on poverty um, for adolescent aged children because we think that poverty is cyclical and if we can break the cycle, early on in the youth, then they can escape and pull themselves out of poverty. And the way we're going to do this is through um, two different incentives. One side is going to school every day, maintaining attendance through free lunch and breakfast programs. So they know that coming to school is a safe place where they're going to be taken care of because a lot of dropout comes from instability in the home. The mm -hmm. other side of that is after school programs that act almost like a tech school because maybe for some impoverished children, going to college or university is not it's not likely for them. It's maybe that mm. ship has sailed, and it can't be done. But going to a tech school where they can develop skills to get a real sustainable job, mm. they can pull themselves and their family out of poverty while also staying out of trouble, out of gangs mm. Mm. after school. Good, very good. One minute pitch, please. Clap on them. Thank you. Can you pass mic to to the front? Yes. Um, um, is is uh, tapping on one issues very specific, and working around it an idea to wrap around. Uh, it's good uh, wrapping things. So. Uh, so we are thinking about education uh, in different and all over the world and are trying to get um, build a house or whatever this is a building to uh, gather people to learn. For example, uh, the areas in India that they uh, don't even have ch chance to uh, get educated or not even not have a chance to sustain their own lives. Mm -hmm. So we're going to gather them uh, and trying to invite uh, any volunteers to teach them uh, to learn a living at least, uh, or some practical training workshops for them to uh, not just backing over, but uh, to really gain uh, skills for themselves to, to, to sustain their lives, not only for themselves, mm -hmm. but also for their families. Or, yeah. And then after that, if, uh, if the, this plan is going to going well, and then it's not only going to solve their living problems, but to raise their standard, to raise their educational uh, mind setting, and then they they're going to help back to their own uh, uh, society. So they're going to raise up teachers, and so they can mm. develop this into more subsidiary. Mm. Okay, so this is spread it, uh, spread it, um, um, pay it forward somewhat, like uh, you educate someone, and then. Carry it on. All right, thank you. Clapping hands. In your group, please. Um, there are a lot of people um, operating some small businesses, like selling some basic goods or daily necessities. But however, um, they hope to sell at uh, cheaper prices, but were stopped by some giants, business giants like um, uh, big super supermarkets. And uh, our group hope to uh, launch a com campaign to support the small scale businesses to buy their goods instead of the, those from big giants or big corporations um, so as to hope that 
to, uh, to support the small scale businesses so that the poor people can or who run the business can also gain some money. Mm. Okay, thank you. Clap my hands, please. <laughs> A platform for small business. Okay, your group. So we focus specifically on poverty in Kenya, and we found that one of the main reasons people don't have access to um, higher levels of education, even though they have um, free education, is because of water. So a lot of the children have to walk miles every single day to fetch water for their families. Um, and uh, we were thinking about the idea if on their way walking to school, um, we can build a water sanitation at the school so they can fetch the water and mm. attend class in one go. Um, okay. That would save significantly more time um, for them to actually attend school. Right. And uh, that would contribute to um, breaking the cycle of poverty earlier on as well. Okay, good. Um, some incentive for them to go to school. Same with that group, all right? Yeah, good. Thank you. And your group, please. Uh, we look into the poverty in Hong Kong in the way that education system in Hong Kong, they to the children in the poor family, they uh, keep trapping in the poor situations. That We see the phenomenon that rich people, that their children tend to have getting the better education. Mm. So this is because of the, there are like a lot of contemptation in the big cities that, and there are a lot of busy parents in the poor family that their students are being neglected and they could, and their children are keep losing their competency in, in this city. And it's hard for them to strike on the better livings because so that they were just trapping the poor situation. So our solutions for this is that we want to make good use of the community centers because we know that uh, those busy parents from the poor family, they, they, they tend to work to eight or nine mm -hmm. at night, so they'll put their children to the community center. Mm -hmm. And we want to give good guidance to those children. So we want to recruit some volunteers like from university that we could lead the children, give them tutoring give them good guidance for them to like give them determined for learning mm. like mm -hmm. yeah okay good thank you it's quite similar to what i'm going to talk about later on the group here please so uh, actually our group's idea is to like building a sharing hub to solve the poverty issue because we think that uh, for poor family, maybe one family can get one resources and then if we group 100 families, they can have 100 resources sharing together, like to share the, and then to solve the education problem because uh, many poor uh, students, they cannot get enough resources like to facing the exams or in university, they cannot get enough resources. So if we can build a hub and then to share like in the same region, when they live in the same region or in the same estate, they can share all the resources together and then so they can maximize their resources and then they can help the education to change their future. Mm. Yeah. All right, good, good. So one homework can turn into many homeworks at the same time. No, please, that group. Thank you. Um, poor people, they don't get well education. So we're thinking that because um, good teachers, they don't want to teach at those schools. And then, so maybe you can send like student volunteers to go to those places. For example, like journalism students, they want to write reports, they want to practice their skills of writing things and to observe, etc. So. Um, when the journalism students, they can get experience from them, the students also get educated at the same time. Or, for example, psychology students, they want to practice counseling skills, but in the modern world, it's difficult for them to get opportunity. So maybe they can go there to practice the skills. So at the same time, both parties get the benefits. All right, okay, thank you. How come everyone is education? Right, is it right? Yeah, all of you are education. Good. Let's see, it's very interesting. Um, uh, poverty. Um, one minute, Chris, already? Uh, let's try on some of the thoughts that I already put in there. I try to broaden your, your thinking on the whole process on poverty. Let's try and see. For example, we could break into four different issues, as we said before. So right now, um, all of you uh, on education now. So uh, I, um, uh, maybe I will uh, not to let you choose this direction since all of you are already choosing that direction, but I will, I will tell you what is in my thought. But uh, 
as I said, different ways of approaching one issue that could be turned into different action points. Uh, even in one action, uh, one direction, there are so many ways on working on that. Housing, for example, they will be um, um, uh, using a, a, lot, um, a way that they pool the resources together with uh, all the families. Um, uh, and then light B is another way of uh, co-housing as well. So uh, what we intended to do is to uh, vote. But uh, since I know all of you will vote for education, so that option is deleted. So uh, the other three, working poor, housing, and food that you can choose. No education. So um, think about in that way. Which way you think is, a, apart from education, is a good way in approaching the uh, poverty? OK? So everyone got one vote. Oh, OK. Uh, working poor. Uh, actually, education is quite obvious. You get to know. It's uh, about cross-generational um, education. That you, you, you are poor, but you don't want your kids being poor. So um, that, that should not be um, passing on the generations. But uh, working poor, people think that um, <clears throat> um, education is one thing. But if we could improve the livelihood of the adult, uh, for example, uh, more time for him or her going back to home uh, with a better pay for them, or they could uh, work on small business and get their better living would be a better way for them to improve. So if we sort out the adult's problem, so their families will be benefited. The house budgets and things will be improved. Housing. There exists some argument that uh, if we could solve the housing issue, just like the light beam, what we learned from, uh, part of the re rationale behind it is uh, if you get them to be a, a better housing, the ecosystem changed. So they could be um, uh, handling something by themselves in other areas. So that's one argument of looking at the watermelon. Lastly, food. Uh, if you, maybe you don't think food could um, be a sustainable thing that so you could solve, but people just think that I'm eating every day with good food, but I just don't want to see people starving. And there exists a lot of um, uh, food waste now in Hong Kong, as you can imagine. How come that we cannot solve something with that? So uh, that's the argument behind it. So every different direction, there's no right or wrong, good or bad, but it's just um, preferences. So apart from education, now, who want to vote for working poor? Two votes. Housing. Around six votes. Food. So apart from education, it's food. If I, um, I open up, oh, education is everybody vote for education, right? <laughs> I'm sure. So OK, now I just want to illustrate. Uh, don't worry too much about it. Um, invent. Actually, I prepared some ideas for um, each of these. For example, on education, you could work on directions as an after-school program, uh, like what you, did, what you said about reducing the digital divide. Let me go through this. Education is actually a project under SVHK. It's an after-school program. We, we go into the school, work with the school. So we use the idle capacity, the classroom, so that we don't need to pay high rent. But at the same time, we're hiring tutors. It's not volunteer. Uh, hiring tutors is cheap, but uh, uh, so we keep a low budget. From Monday to Friday, you start to year end, we take care of the kids. Especially some kids, the parents will be working late. That's what you said. <clears throat> so right now, we are working with uh, around 350 students in seven schools in the poorer area. Tin Shui Wei, Dong Chong, Tun Mun, somewhere like this. And apart from homework that we have to take in care, we'll take care of their extracurricular activities. Uh, Saturday, we bring them out for some activities. So that's how we engage with them. So uh, the business model, uh, right now, if they could, their parents working still can pay, they pay a little bit. Every day, several tens of dollars of Hong Kong would be fine. And then if uh, some of them couldn't pay it, we have a high price for them, or we could subsidize them. On the other hand, we get some corporate support, the CSR. So right now, uh, Standard Charter, Phil Morris, and a lot of different organizations are uh, uh, corporate, duty-free shops, and they're supporting some program. So our dream is uh, every corporate could adopt a school in a poor area in Hong Kong. That would be good. So this is uh, my dream. So uh, that's one thing that we are working on. Digital divine, like one laptop a child. It's solving the problem. 
So many of these um, uh, houses in Hong Kong, actually they do not, uh, they, they're, they're living in small house. So the big computer, actually some, some people donated, they just put it under the bed. There's no space for them to put it up. So laptop would be a one good thing. So uh, if it is a cheap machine, and then maybe supported by some foundation, it could be something for software uh, IT need for the students. So that's different ways. I, sh I just want to show you one problem, one direction, it could be many, many, many ideas. Livelihood. Um, if you are working, um, are going on working poor, microfinance is one way, right? You give them, empower them with doing business. Right now, I would say the minimum wage in Hong Kong cannot solve the problem. Because overall, the poor people do not have a good bargaining power. Because in Hong Kong, high rent. No one can use small business to getting out of the poverty cycle. That's before. Uh, our parents are using small business. Uh, they, they, could, they could earn their own living. They don't need to work. But right now, no way they could do small business. So everybody is employee. So no way, even minimum wage, we cannot help. Because overall, they do not have a good bargaining power to their employers. So that's the problem. So uh, microfinance, if we could empower some people, uh, not just in Bangladesh or in India, some big city like New York, they have tried microfinance before. So that's one possible way, even in the city level. So we could retrain, like the youth, uh, they're coming out um, from, from jail or they do not have a good education background, or some women from mainland, how can we retrain them with some higher value work? Apart from just doing uh, in the restaurants, can we train them to be an elderly care um, worker? Right now, aging populations is coming. So there is a big demand. If you can take care of elderly, you have the skills. You don't need to be a physio or you don't need to be a doctor, but you can help the elderly. That could be another way that, um, for them to retrain. Retraining is a way for, for get a better living for the poor people. So housing. <clears throat> um, Quarter for home for homelets, um, so somewhat like them. We, we're getting these people together to get them uh, with uh, some some uh, shared support for them, uh, to get them build them uh, with some momentum, uh, teach, uh, letting them know, uh, getting some people to share with them, uh, mentoring them, letting them know oh, there's many, many more ways out. It could be something there, and then affordable housing like uh, Light B is one of the ways as well. So you get some. Uh, Actually, Light B is fitting in the middle gap of, um, between the subsidized government housing and also the private market. So right now, there's nothing in between. So actually, uh, around the world, they are um, developing affordable housing. In UK, um, uh, when, you are, when a new developer finding a new land to develop some private housing, they have to commit a certain part of um, uh, buildings to be affordable housing. So uh, that's committed. So I think uh, we need something to fill in the gap. So that's one of the ways. So on food, there are two ways that I, I'm putting here. There are so many ways. Food banks. So basically, it's a, a covering as a safety net for many of the uh, people. So they get one there. Sometimes you buy with a little money. Sometimes you just get free. Um, in Hong Kong, I would say the food bank is not developed well. Uh, after all, it's a charity option. But uh, if we could build up as an uh, affordable supermarket, somewhat like this, it, it would be better. So uh, food bank. Direction is one direction. And another direction, um, like some program to train the women. Uh, Smart Mom is one of the programs by a local NGO. Uh, what they do is um, um, tell them how to buy things smarter. With an equal small budget, they get more nutritious food. They get uh, better things. So it's a way to solve their livelihood, but at the same time, it's uh, solving their, their, their food. Same amount of money, they could buy more food or more nutritious food. So that's some, some kind of software program to put on that. Yeah. So um, different problem, different ways, you can have unlimited, I would say, unlimited ideas that you could thought of. Don't just go on one direction. Oh, um, uh, people with no money, give them money, give them a job. Oh, finding some corporate funding a job is not that simple. And if you go deeper layers, you see better, uh, more things. OK, voting time again. Remember your, your, what you have chose? Food, right? So two directions. Food bank. Oh, sorry. Oops. Food bank and smart mom. Uh, some kind of training program. Okay, now make the decisions. You can have one vote. Who can choose? Who wouldn't want to choose food bank? Raise your hand. 
Who want to choose? Smart mom, raise your hand. Ah, oh, very close. Huh? Food bank. Okay, food bank won the prize. So uh just a preference. And I don't I don't want to spend time to asking you, but you have some rationale behind you. So among your group, when you're discussing on that, try to find some more objective um, criteria for you to discuss on that. Uh, and then don't just stop at that. Even food bang, two words. You can have many more spin-off, many more different ways, many more business model innovation riding on food bank. Okay? You can limit that to just a um, couple of food items. Oh, rice on oil, uh, cooking oil and things. You can be an affordable supermarket. Uh, you could just get some charity or corporate program to support it as a CSR and think so many ways, even you think about one way, okay? So in the business plan, the, how to build it, even on one direction, could be very different. Sometimes we miss these things in the business plan. Your passion. Try to slot that in, if you have that, between the lines. Um, oh, I have done some research. I have been to the uh, food bank, being a volunteer for some time. That could help you to tell more about your passion, um, how, how deep you can go. Um, innovation. Search more on the, on the web. Right now, it's much easier on the internet. Try not to replicate. Uh, apart from just Hong Kong, you can look for some more ideas around the world. Writing on food bank even, you can think a lot more about different ideas. Don't just stop at re just replicating some other ideas. You have your own innovations. Same thing that we talked about microfinance. You could think about Grameen Bank, but you can think about Kiva. You understand what I mean? So same directions, start um, inventing, writing on that. Um, impact. Look the way that I said. After a couple of years, now is um, 2016. Looking back three years later, what your social enterprise would, want, would like to make a difference? What would that be? Try to develop it into different layers of, layers of um, uh, impact that you can create. How many food you, you have fulfilled? How many people benefited? Uh, these people, would that be, uh, they will be a volunteer again? Or how can you how pay it forward? Think further away. Readiness. Um, as I said, most of, uh, many of the plans that are competing with you might be some real work. They might be already developed some technology. Um, they might be already running, up and coming. But uh, you can get yourself to be more ready. You don't need to overpromise. Oh, uh, after I graduate, I really would dedicate myself in that plan. No need. Just realistic, uh, realistically think about that way. For example, food bank is a way that you think about, oh, I want to run a small pilot in the first year first. Uh, in the first year. And then, uh, uh, with, uh, as we are still students, we will limit that to uh, some triple on one, in one area. Uh, we mobilize our classmates or schoolmates. Um, 20, 30 of them will be enough. We will work with a small uh, pilot program. But after that bank, uh, we sell some products uh, at cheap price, but we get our sustainability. We could then think about replicating that in other areas. But we are working with the NGOs, so we don't need to commit ourselves to be full time. The, uh, I just want to illustrate. That's a way that you how to spell out your readiness. Most of the time, the judge will see in a very different way. You are students, you cannot do it. Um, they will challenge you in that way. But think a more realistic way. But after three years, if we could get it done, we want to open up our retail shop, but not right after. Tell them realistically. That could show your readiness, all right? So that's some, something that you can solve. Resource. Now uh, we are growing a food bank that you have chosen. I am giving you three packages. Tell me which one you will choose. First one, someone giving you one million of US dollars. Um, here's an ex-banker, Goldman, from Goldman Sachs. I do a lot of bad things, now want to do something good. So he committed himself to be your volunteer as well, helping you to work on the strategy, but at the same time committing you one million of dollars. Uh, sorry, your brother is working on Goldman Sachs? Sorry. <laughs> How come you're so happy? Are you working on Goldman Sachs now? Now? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just an example. Oh, let's use uh, Credit Suisse then. 
<laughs> OK. Um, so this is the first package. Package two, um, someone giving you 100,000 US. But uh, at the same time, you get um, uh, intermediaries, um, somewhat as famous as Social Ventures Hong Kong helping you. No, just kidding. Uh, it's an incubator providing you with some uh, lawyers, accountants, or marketing strategies uh, incubating together with you. Uh, the third thing, you will be have provided a strategic alliance collaboration opportunity with one of the Fortune, Fortune 500 company, a big corporate, multinationals having you on that. How about that? Good, right? They're not, maybe. <laughs> uh, third package, no money. But you will have the same incubator, intermediaries helping you. But you will get three connections. One, working with a Fortune 500. Second, global NGO tackling poverty as stra uh, strategic partner. So maybe you can cheat it as uh, um, um, United Nations or UNICEF or, or anyone. Um, Oxfam is helping you on that. How about that? And then uh, you get the local government department helping you. Um, what about the food and, food and health departments? They will be providing support to you. So three packages. Choose one. It's difficult, right? Money or support? Uh, Goldman Sachs. Um, <laughs> sorry, credit suits. <clears throat> OK, food bank. Who choose package number one? Raise your hand. No one like money. One million. Package two. Package three. Mm, two to three quite close. Um, it doesn't really matter. I know people don't like don't Goldman Sachs, but you look at her, so pretty. Right? <laughs> no. uh, just think in that way. Sometimes it's not just money. One connection could help you take it forward. It's not just the money. But uh, of course, some, at some stage, for some different plan, it could be considered very differently. If you are working on some technology, uh, you need some R&D. Of course, money is important. Don't talk about connections. If we don't get the prototype done, nothing can be taken forward, right? So that stage, you might need money. You might need Goldman Sachs. But uh, at some stage, you need the connections more. So so happen, I would say, food bank, as you might consider, oh, OK, the local collaborations is important. Understand? So that's a uh, thing beyond money. That's the only thing that I want to talk about. Oh, you chose already. Final plan. I don't um, want to go into, but uh, the problem, question mark. The solution, the plan, and the resources that you will leverage. That's, you can complete your plan very easily then. Secret recipe. I just go back to what I said in the, at the beginning. It's the people. It's the passion. Hi, it's Andy Lau again. Um, I'm not uh, tired. I feel um, satisfied. Uh, I use every single uh, effort, all I have, I just utilize it. And at the finish point, you feel happy. So um, you will be committing some time on this plan anyways. So fully utilize it. Take it a chance to find your own passions. Go into the field, no matter what. Try to think in that way. And then try to feel it, feel the issue. And then um, try to do more associations. Take your chance as a practice for yourself. Do the more one minute pitch. Really talk to not 30, maybe 20. Each of you, talk to 20 persons about your idea. Practice the one minute pitch you will be sharpening your skills. So take your chance like this. At the end point, you feel satisfied. Japanese guy, all the way, he is holding his mom's pictures. So every single step, like diamond cap Doris, what is in her, when, in her mind is working on his mission or her mission. Uh, some, a guy from France, he proposed at the end point. Uh, many women cry. I don't cry. I don't know why. Uh, maybe they're single. Oh my goodness! They say yes, just like you. So uh, maybe they're divorced. So I uh, just kidding. Uh, 
worry about that lady. Uh, but I, I'm worried about that guy because uh, what, if, what if she said no? <laughs> yeah, do it again. 250 kilometers. Uh, very risky steps, I would say. Pamela, she feels satisfied. She, I would say, inspired a lot more people. Japanese guy, 65 years old. Uh, he was a boxer when he was young. But uh, unfortunately, first day, he twisted his leg. So every day, he walked like this. Every single step, 250 kilometers. He finished it. Last day is like a um, 12K. Um, and in the middle, he just sat down. Uh, many people finished within one or two hours of run, but um, uh, he used almost six hours in the end. But uh, in the middle, he sat down and said, I shouldn't do it. Because bones touches bones for many days already. So the real pain came out. Uh, at the end, many uh, runners wait for so long, and they worried. And they all came back in the middle, clapping hands to that guy, shouting at his name, walking step by steps like this, back to the finish point. And everybody just cried. And that lady over here, her name is Agnes, a volunteer from Hong Kong, uh, one of my friends. And then uh, he, she saw that scene, and then she's not a runner before, nothing. But she said to me, I want to do Gobi March next year. Two months ago, Agnes finished her race. Uh, she's now a serious runner, practiced more than me, and then kept on running for some of the races. So one guy could inspire a lot more people. Uh, he's the last one came back. Maybe you will lose your SE challenge as well, but you might be inspiring a lot more people around you, uh, even the people in common sense. So those people who are silly enough to dream with a passion, we call them change maker. Let me show you a video um, to wrap this section up. It's in Mandarin, but you can realize it. It's uh, coming out from a real life story from Taiwan. Um,
人为什么要活着？因为 they are dreaming. What are you doing here?、Uh, it's a real story.、Uh, actually, actually, it's not five persons. It's seventeen.、Um, average age over eighty. They went around Taiwan, completing a dream. Many Taiwanese rounding the island is、uh, a dream of them. So check it out. So you you that, did that before? No. <laughs> okay. So、um, that's all about my section today. Thank you very much. Uh, if you don't mind, yeah, there's little time that you can ask some questions. If there is any. Some of them, yeah. Um, success and failure. Yeah, like what, what sets some, what sets a person apart? Ideas of um, I, I understand the questions, but I, I just、um, don't know how to address this. Maybe in two ways. Success, I would say,、uh, is really those persons with a story. They got some experience.、Uh, they got some background and stories, like Doris, like Ricky. Uh, like David is my co-founder in Green Monday,、uh, because of their beliefs, it's come out coming out from their heart. They could get everything done. It's just like magnet. If you get the passion, you will attract the right persons around you to help you to get it through. I don't know why. It's very magical. I can tell you. In these few years, I could see that. So if you are committing yourself and working on something, don't worry too much about it. You will get it done. More philosophically, addressing these questions, you have to define more clearly what is success and what is failure. To me,、um, if you tried, if you tried hard, there will never be failure. That's the success, you, because you are listening to your heart. You are not just doing something because oh, people feel it is good. You are not fulfilling living in some other people's dream. What I talked about is your dream. If you are purchasing,、um, pursuing for your own dream, it is already success. You will feel free. You will feel light. In that way, you will get your success. If you feel、um, you feel very stressful every day,、um, it is a failure because you are fulfilling someone's dream. You are you are working for money. You are working on your parents' expectation things. So、um, sorry. I want to take it to talk about more philosophical,、uh, philosophical things. Other questions? Okay. Thank you so much. Hope you learned something here today.